beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see that it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed and stay blessed Give him no rest till he establishes you. Give him no rest till he makes your life a praise in the end. Shabarakatul Sabradishnah. Lord, we believe your word. We continue to press. We continue to press until we become testaments. Hallelujah. One last prayer point and then you'll be seated. Lord, my spirit and my mind is open. Not just your spirit, my spirit man and my mind is open. Lift your voice and pray. I receive illumination. Are you praying outside? Are you praying? My spirit is open. My mind is open. Praise the Lord. Please be seated. Spirit of the living God, we're here again and we trust the supply of your power. We receive spiritual intelligence. We receive illumination. The Bible says, true knowledge shall the just be delivered. Therefore, Lord, we declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that we are rising from one dimension to the other and tonight oh god our hearts and our minds are opened in the name of jesus christ good evening everybody it matters to god that we grow it doesn't just matter to god alone that we are saved the entire tripartite nature of man must be involved in expressing the victory of Christ. Listen very carefully. The entire tripartite nature of man must be involved in expressing the victory of Christ. Your spirit, your mind, your physical body, your life, the entire three realms in the realm of the spirit, the realm of your mind, and even in the physical, the entire tripartite dimension must be able to successfully communicate the victory of Christ. If one or more of these realms um, does not successfully communicate the victory of Christ, you are going to limit 
the presentation of the power, the victory, the reality of the victory of Christ will not find full expression in our lives. Therefore, we must continue to press, listen carefully, to make sure that Christ is a contention and is a journey. To make sure that Christ is revealed in every aspect of our lives. In the realm of the spirit, you are sound spiritually. You are growing. You are conforming to the image, the character of the Christ. Are we together? Your life is becoming a representation of God. You are hosting very superior dimensions of his presence. Then your mind is enlightened. You are sustaining an understanding that is higher, far higher than the intelligence of the average human being. And then your physical environment, all the auxiliary systems that support the fact that you are in Christ. You are only fruitful in your Christian experience when your entire tripartite being participates in revealing the victory of Christ. If I am sound spiritually and I am anointed but then my mind is barren and unfruitful. There is a dimension of God that my life will never be able to present. Are we together now? Yes. If I am wealthy and I am influential and I have a healthy mind but my spirit is dead, there is a dimension of God I will never be able to communicate. The lopsidedness in the teaching about the revelation of Christ through a man, what the Bible calls the mystery of godliness, is the reason why there's a lot of unfulfillment in our Christian experience. So it's as though you should select one area where you want Christ to be revealed. And some selected finances, some selected intelligence, some selected spiritual health, some selected influence, some selected career and so everybody just selects and god says no i will never be revealed holy like that the entire tripartite nature of man must participate in revealing all of him if you're with me say amen, amen. so the assignment in building you by the spirit is to make sure that as we continue to press by his grace no aspect of our life is left barren and unfruitful. Are we together? I have said it again and again that the vision for what we are becoming by the Spirit of God through these teachings is very clear. There is a picture already. We are not guessing what we will be like. Are we together? The Bible says it does not yet appear what we shall be like. But then Christ has already exemplified all that we should become. So we continue as we behold him as in a mirror. The Bible says there is a change, a metamorphosis, like an insect transits from egg, lava, pupa to the adult. That's what is happening to us. So never mind the fact that certain aspects of your life have not yet conformed. Don't worry. Your job is to be consistent and watch the wonder-working power of the Spirit. A woman's assignment is to be pregnant. The dynamics of the growth of the child, leave it to God. Every day she just knows that there's something in my stomach, whether she can feel it or not. And then at a point, she starts sensing that, look, this child is becoming real. And then nine months later, she gives birth to a healthy baby. Imagine that the woman gets worried and is wondering, what part of him is growing now? Is it the leg or the head? You are going to stress yourself. A system has already been designed in you. When your part is played, God's part kicks in immediately. So it's not everything that you need to know. There are things that you need to know. You don't need to know everything. But the part you should know, if you don't know it, it will make God look unfruitful in your life. Hallelujah. As we prepare for our retreat, I'm very excited about the weekend because for 
for us is a time is a time when our lives will never never be the same i really believe it's the first time we're having two day stretch retreat usually one day will be for the leaders and then everybody but the kind of information you are about to receive cannot be passed in one day you need to sit down and get this thing i prayed to god and i prayed for you i said lord they must get it they must get it when you get it it shows he said that which we have seen that which we have heard that which our hands have handled you can doubt what you hear sometimes you can even doubt what you see but what your hands have handled now it's too real to doubt it hallelujah praise the lord tonight's teaching is a response um Many times I'm led by the Spirit to just bring teachings that attempt to respond to the issues around the lives of people as revealed to me by the Spirit. Or sometimes it may not directly be a revelation. It may just be that when I, I examine the kinds of questions and the communication of the frustration of people as they send text messages... And once I find out that a people continually need clarity over certain aspects, then I know that it's a sign that I should commit myself in bringing them enlightenment. And I think that recently one of the areas that I would say a lot of people have had, it's, it's a growing frustration, is why... The victory in Christ, the success that the Bible says should follow a believer on account of knowledge, partnership with the Holy Spirit and obedience. What is really hindering the manifestation? Listen, tonight's teaching is very powerful, very, very powerful. Because we know that for as long as realities are locked up in the spirit, Ephesians chapter 1 the Bible says, blessed be the God of our Father, you know, uh, our, our Lord and Father Jesus Christ, who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So we're not in doubt over the fact that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So we are blessed. Everybody say, I am blessed. That is a fact. The Bible declares it. Number two, the Bible tells us that we are blessed with blessings. Are we together now? And the Bible tells us that those blessings are spiritual in context. When the Bible tells you a thing is spiritual, that means that you may not be able to use your sensory perceptions to confirm its presence it is locked up in a dimension that is higher than the three-dimensional realm listen very carefully and then number three the bible says it is in heavenly places that is where these realities are domiciled now follow me very carefully so we are blessed with all blessings how many all blessings all blessings this is the revelation of what grace is grace is any and everything only god can produce it's not just unmerited access any spiritual reality at all that can only be birthed and communicated by the christ and in the christ is called grace anointing is grace the wisdom of god is grace the peace that surpasses all understanding is grace. Are we together? Righteousness is grace. Mercy is grace. Every constituent that only the Christ can produce is called grace. Please listen. You have to understand this. I define grace as every good and perfect gift that comes from above. So spiritual blessings from above heavenly places but routed only in christ now the difference between grace 
and every other thing is that grace can only be obtained in Christ. An angel cannot be the basis for grace. Are we together now? Yes. Christ is the epicenter. Listen carefully. Now, grace is very powerful when it is taught correctly. That means if grace cannot, if that reality is not captured in the Christ, you don't, there's no point seeking it. It's not available. So before you ever begin to think of the possibility of receiving and working in any reality, your first assignment is to find out whether the grace of God has made that reality available. And the way you know is to find out whether the Christ, his person, Jesus, the door, does he lead you to that possibility? Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am life. He said many things about himself. He also said, I am the door, not just the good shepherd, not just the bread. Are we together now? So the grace of God is the basis for availability of anything. The grace of God has in it the possibility for a man to be anointed. That is why we can press for the anointing. The grace of God makes his prosperity available. The grace of God makes his righteousness available. Listen, the grace of God makes access into the mind of God, access into the gifts of the spirit available. This is the correct and balanced communication of grace. So you approach the grace of God as a summation, the holistic picture of every spiritual privilege that only the office of the Christ can provide. You cannot route the grace of God through any other formula. That does not mean you cannot receive through any other formula. You can. But if it must be by grace, it has to be in Christ. <laughs> he had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. So we are no longer in confusion as to the fact that we are blessed. Listen, we just finished a series on spiritual stability. And the goal was to help our convictions to be unbending. Meaning if anyone gets up now, no matter how well-meaning, and indoctrinates you and makes you feel like there is nothing in store for you in Christ, you will respectfully know that as powerful as this is, is an error because the bible declare that he had blessed us with all spiritual blessings now the next question becomes why then because you see listen i hope you know that you are intrinsically a spirit this is very basic tonight but don't trivialize it at all say i am a spirit not i have a spirit if you say you have a spirit you are wrong you are a spirit are we together now yes that spirit is domiciled in a body according to the law of territory if you are in the realm of the spirit you don't need a physical body are we together your spirit body is sufficient for the spiritual climate but if you are in this physical realm it was so designed that you must have a material body not necessarily a mortal body but a material body a body that is made out of the material of the earth so that you can be compatible with the environment. That's why God made man from the elements of the earth. When Bible says God made man from the dust, it's a generic statement. It doesn't mean God used mud. It means he sourced the instrument of our physical configuration from the same elements. So you can look at man and see similitudes of the things in man in creation. For instance, the bones of man are in the similitude of rocks. That's why they don't decay. A man can die and his bones can be there for a thousand years, just like a rock can remain. You see, the hair of man, you see it in the similitude of grass. You can cut grass, it can grow back, your hair. So it means God made man, he sourced the material for your physical frame from the environment. That's why the environment should not hurt you because you are compatible if your environment hurts you then it means something else is playing out are, are you getting what i'm saying now it's called the law of territory so when 
the word wanted to become flesh he needed to come in the similitude of a material body that was compatible to the territory where he was going to come and die if jesus was going to die in venus the planet venus he would find out thank god he's the wisdom of god he would have to reconfigure himself in the similitude of that that's the reason why when angels every time angels were to come to the earth they would either remain in the realm of the spirit and by the supply of the spirit they cause the eye of an individual on earth who is also a spirit to see beyond the three-dimensional realm then the angel can now communicate to you are we together now or the angel assumes a material body it's a privilege that the angels have they can translate themselves and assume bodies and then come into your realm and at that point you will not need to see a vision again they can walk like you you can now use your natural eyes you can never see spiritual things with your natural eyes now if you think you saw it with your natural eyes it's just the interpretation of your mind i hope you know that you you don't see with your eyes <laughs> look at this shut down a man's brain keep his eyes open will he be seen you see through your eyes you see your eyes is the window that your spirit looks through but what processes that image is not this that's why if you read in the book of acts paul was blind yet he was still seeing visions that's why blind people can still be productive because what is responsible for imagery is not the eyes is the mind are we together now so the bible tells us that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places but the challenge now is that, as you've always heard me say it here, whilst it is true that we do not seek God because of tea and bread and money and fame and prestige, all of these things are not and never will be the basis of loving and seeking God. But God so designed this kingdom such that as you genuinely seek him, listen very carefully, all of these privileges and these blessings because remember he designed them and he designed them to be the support system for your serving him is that true that means that i will serve god effectively if i say i designed something to support you it means that you may you may not necessarily die without it but you will not be effective without it are we together now many believers are getting frustrated and this is the reason my message starts now they are aware because this is the word of god that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places but the frustration is beginning to grow how long do i have to wait how do i know whether something is fake or demonic or that i'm not obeying something because it looks like the time that we are waiting for that which has been resident in heavenly places to find expression when a woman gets pregnant she doesn't expect to give birth in two weeks but she also doesn't expect to be pregnant forever is that true she knows that there is a period of conception and she gladly she may not know the particular day the doctors can approximate intelligently but she knows it is around a season that my edd is on the 14th of september plus or minus the doctors will give 14th of september cannot be 6th of march that is demonic are we together that's too far so there is a time period there is an approximation that is the same way with a believer meaning when you start your journey this is you now you are starting your journey you should be able complete you should be able to know that okay by the time i get here what should have been possible in my life 
Everything may not yet experientially be manifest, but there should be what I call a token, a consolation, something that motivates you that I got it right. Okay, I started five years ago, praying in tongues one hour every day, reading my Bible five chapters every day, reading my Moonrose book. After five years, I should be able to look back and there has to be an evidence in my life. It encourages me to know that the ones that have not manifest, I'm getting there. But when your life becomes Ichabod, that everything at all, spiritually, even if there's nothing materially, let there be spiritual intelligence. Let there be the anointing. Praying one hour every day for five years to the same God of heaven. And not one sick person has been healed through your hands. And not, I mean, you have not seen any clear dream that came to pass. At that point, you know that something is wrong. Are we together? Many believers are now wondering. Then your spirit man receives that thing. You are doing well spiritually. Everybody who looks at you knows that you are on fire. But then relative to what God has shown you, you find out that it looks like certain things are not happening. Then you are taught that you need your mind to catch up now and get involved in the process. Are we together? When you start working with God, your mind doesn't necessarily need to actively follow. Are we together now? You, you can't get someone born again and you are teaching him principles of excellence and this and that. That's, that's, too, that's too unneeded for that level. When people get born again, they are exposed to fire. Principles of prayer. How to study the word. Understanding the foundations of righteousness. Are we together? Repentance from dead works. They need to understand the redemptive work of Christ. They need to be introduced to the person of the Holy Spirit. The value of corporate gathering. Are we together? All of these foundational things, they have to be involved. But then eventually... Now you are in need, your child is in need, and now your mind comes in. So you start renewing your mind by the strategic communication of God's word. But then you get to a point where your physical environment is desperately in need of the manifestation of those spiritual blessings. This is where my teaching is now. The barrenness of God being represented in your physical life you may laugh because of the consolation you are receiving from your spirit man and the fact that your mind is now catching up. But sooner or later, the reality of time will start demanding God to be manifest in your physical life, not just your spirit alone. The vicissitudes of life will now begin to compel you to need to translate those spiritual realities into a context that is applicable to your physical life. Otherwise, you will be surprised to find out that a boomerang begins to happen. That the challenge that now obstructs your spirit life will start from the natural realm, physically. Are we together? Yes. So this gentleman has not eaten and he's surprised that he can't pray. The realm of the spirit is affected by something that is happening here. He's standing and he's watching two of his kids they are driving them from school and he cannot pay. And when he started with God, the issue of finances was not an issue. But at this point, as a father of two, you can't ignore it. Are we together? And he's getting frustrated. When he started ministry, everybody used to meet under a tree. So there was no need for bench and mat. If you fell down, you fell on the grass. But he took it a step further and he opened a church. Are we together? And now you don't sit on the floor in a church. And he just realized that they need to buy chairs. And he just realized that in that church, people will get married one day. And that means the reality of family life, their well-being. That if the families are not doing well, no matter how anointed he is, very soon there will be empty pews. Now, this guy is, is there is a need for the revelation of Christ to find expression, not just in the spirit realm, not just in the realm of the mind, but also in the physical. This is where many of us are now. Apostle, 
the Bible says, great is the mystery of godliness that Christ was manifest in the flesh. Listen, he appeared to men, he appeared to angels. The word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. You only behold that glory when it dwells among you. Are we together? Even the glory of the Father and the Bible says he's full of grace and truth. So I want to help us tonight to show us, because let me tell you, let me give you a very kind advice. Never allow your personal frustration make you doubt the validity of kingdom laws. Never allow your personal frustration. I know this is very painful. You are, you are far from receiving the help of God when you take your personal frustration and create a vendetta between you and God from it. And say, Lord, as far as I'm concerned, I'm doing what should be done. Why are things not working? No. Many times, the mistake is never from God. A gentleman sent me a text today, probably he's following, and he was going to commit suicide by this night. I don't mean this play, play, I will kill myself. He really was going to do it. There's how you know that somebody means business with suicide. The kind of dreams he's having. That somebody cannot just wake up and say, I want to kill myself. He's just looking for help. But there, there are things that can lead to, you know that this person will actually kill himself. And I was telling him, I said, no, no, you don't have to kill yourself. And the person says, usually this is it. I have done everything I know to do. Or I have done everything koinonia teaching says to do. Or I have done everything my pastor or the word of God says to do. I'm going to make some very audacious statements tonight and I hope it doesn't offend you. If it does not work, you are missing something. Hmm. The systems of the kingdom are so flawless if you really get it, your life will wonder and marvel at the results that will come. Now, this is an, an uncomfortable truth. But I want us to please, for God's sake, humble ourselves tonight and just lend me your attention. That if something is not working in my life and your life, there is something. You know, have you seen a learner learning how to drive? And then the learner is surprised. Why is this car moving that way? I thought you said I should talk. I'm doing my best. He thinks based on his mind that he's doing his best. But the professional knows what is wrong. And the learner will argue and say this and that and that. No, I don't, I don't believe it. I don't do this and that and that. When I started marking student scripts, a school of ministry student, that's when I knew that many students that say they gave me are talking nonsense. <laughs> they gave me five. They gave me ten. As that's for, for, in, for many of it is, is complete nonsense. At least I'm honest, I'm born again and godly and I'm the one that is doing the marking. From a very unbiased perspective. And I'm surprised. Ah, if you wrote this, you should be joking to expect to pass. <laughs> Now, but you ask the person who wrote it. I'm just using that as an example. You ask the person, just because he read and just because he wrote. You can do a mathematical calculation and be wrong. But just because your wrong answer is part of the answers and you got it doesn't mean you passed. The answer to the question may be five. But your wrong calculation gave you two and option A is two. And you say, I got it. No, you didn't get it. You just found your error as part of the options. Are we following? I don't want to live my life doubting the things I believe. I don't want to get to a point in my life where it becomes too late to be accurate. So I want to walk with you in a few minutes and I want, by the grace of God, I think for many of us, I know what is wrong. 
and I want to show you this night. And I want you to listen. Because I'm speaking to people who are largely spiritually enlightened. So what is wrong? You will be surprised to know that the same frustration many of you are having, I had it too. Because I believe with all my heart that I was getting everything right. But looking from today's standpoint, <laughs> it was a joke. I even wonder how I can see the gaps that the mercy of God covered. Outstanding success has a huge price. Write it down. For someone, this is already a deliverance. Because you believe that success, just because the Bible says he has given us all things, just because the Bible says the primary reason why many believers never succeed, whether in ministry or in whatever area of life, among other things is they misunderstand how spiritual things are both communicated and translated. The idea of spiritual things being an inheritance in Christ, that word, if not well explained, can mislead you and make you fail. Now the Bible is saying, I have been given all things. If I have been given, it means my next and only assignment based on this is to receive. And you are not wrong. But the system of reception is every other thing I will be saying. For many people, we think to receive just means to verbalize by faith. I receive. You see it now? But that's incomplete. The same way the system of God giving you this. You see, the Bible speaks from different angles and different dimensions. And so when you are interpreting scripture, you have to first understand the context. What was the subject matter? That was being addressed because it will help you know why certain expressions were used when paul in his pauline epistle is teaching them on revelations of redemption you notice that his communications was uh, they were always from a standpoint of the finished work of christ you will never see in paul's context his exegesis on redemption he does not ever give you any idea that there's anything to be done so he lets you know that you are starting from a position of victory and that is correct with respect to your understanding of redemptive realities but now you switch to the other dimension which is coming into the experience of the kingdom and paul begins to change his communication it is not a, he is not counteracting himself. He is now showing you, why should I want to press to enter something that is an inheritance? So Paul gets to the book of Hebrews and Paul now surprises us and even confuses many. That in spite of the fact that you have been given this, he said there remained a rest for the people of God. Are we together now? He now begins to talk of the Sabbath of the church and the Sabbath of a man's destiny. That until now, there is still a rest. That means until today, men have not entered into the experience of this. And he says, today, if you hear his voice, he says, do not harden your heart like they did in the provocation in the wilderness. Is that true? And then the Bible now begins to tell us that he heard the word just like we did. But the word did not profit them. And he now introduces something strange. He said, not mixed. A Jimmy's wife is a professional baker. The word mix doesn't mean to talk. It means it involves action. It involves process. When you mix something, you combine factors together. And the Bible said not mix with faith. Faith is part of the many things that should be mixed. Not mix with faith. Like you say, you didn't add salt to the food. The food is not salt. There were many other things before salt arrived. But for the taste you are looking for, salt is the ingredient that must be added. Not mixed with faith in them that heard it. And so many people are unable to translate these realities into their life. Success has a huge price. It truly is very costly. 
The earlier you got this, the better for you. Settle it once and for all that the birth of anything valuable is painful. Number two, like I will always say, failure too has a huge price tag. Many people don't know that it's not easy to fail. They think it's very easy to fail. If there is a price to produce the results that we need, what is that price? I'm not going to be talking of many of them. I'm just going to mention one that I believe with all my heart that many people are not doing is the price of diligence. Write it down and listen very carefully. Please don't assume you understand what I'm saying. The price of diligence. Proverbs 14 verse 23. Read it for me if you are a serious Christian. One, two, read, please. But the talk of the lips only does what? In all labor, there is profit. But the talk of the lips only will tend a man to penury. There is a dimension of entering into your rest that requires labor, requires diligence. Diligence is a trait that all successful people, whether in ministry, in business, have. Many believers are busy. Many believers are taking action, but they are not diligent. Write this down. Diligence is the quality of being productive. Write it down. Diligence is the quality of being strategic. Diligence is the quality of being resilient unbending the refusal to bow out diligence is the quality of endurance please listen to me in africa i don't know if it's a social cultural context but we have a very funny understanding about success we have all kinds of mentalities about success that are wrong in themselves. But I think probably the worst of them all is how much we trivialize success to believe that God or government or parents or mother nature owes us are being successful. Or we just feel I may just put my hands here and there. And then with just a prophetic word or just a blessing or just a, a, a little oil on it, everything just works. Diligence is not just hard work. Notice my choice of words. You must be strategic. You must be productive. Listen, diligence involves the sacrifice of your time. Diligence involves the sacrifice of your energy. Diligence involves the sacrifice of your resources. The sacrifice of your time, write it down. <laughs> ah, blessed be the name of the Lord. May God open our eyes tonight. Look at me. Let me teach you something. Everybody say, time is money. Say it again. You've heard it every time, but what does it mean? What does it mean by time is money? That means that you are only rewarded 
when you create an event that makes men to have time for it. Listen. Come, Pastor Lawrence, and your lovely wife. I was happy to see you people. Just celebrate them. Come, come quickly. Come stand here. Don't be embarrassed. Thank God you're a pastor. Look at this. How many of you know that last year we didn't have time for their wedding? Because the event was not yet created. Anytime an event has not been created in the earth realm, there is no time for it. <laughs> that means you cannot commit any resources towards it because there is no time for it. Both of them decided, when did you marry? What's the date? 15th? Now, they, they decided to bring time and attach an event to 15th September. The moment they took the risk to create an event, people started having time for them. And resources started coming to them. Now that the event has been achieved, nobody will give you money for marriage again because there is no longer time for it. Listen, listen. By 1990, there was no time for Zuckerberg. There was no time for Facebook because that product was not created. There was no event that will make you have time for Facebook. So a gentleman said, let me make men have time. And with that time will come resources. And he made available an event. And now we have time for Facebook. There was no time for Koinonia. Before Koinonia started, your Friday night were for something else. The moment there was a vision, that vision brought time to it. And with that time, every resource came. Is that true? So when you say time is money, time is not necessarily directly money. Time is only money when an event, a creativity was added and attached to that time. It will now make men to have time for you and with that time it will make them to have their resources. So when you pay Zuckerberg, you are not paying him for the product necessarily. You are really paying for the price he has paid to make you have time for that thing. Are we together now? Now you all have time for browsing. Once upon a time, you could not do that on your phone. Somebody made that possibility. With that time now goes your data. Your data will finish and you want to invest it. When you pay data, what are you really paying? Think well. What are you paying? Time. When you pay for a venue and they say from 12 o'clock to 6 is 60,000, what did you pay for? If they give you a job and they say from 8 to 6 you are working, what are you really paying for? If you take away time on earth, nobody will pay anybody for anything again. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So there is an event. And then men begin to invest in this. And now they are married. God bless you. Thank you. Ask him what it took to create that time. He summarized it in one sentence. It is not. I said, that's my message. <laughs> now, but is he married or not? Please talk. You are laughing, but I hope you understand what I'm saying. Is he married or not? Did the devil stop it? But it is not. 24 hours to your wedding. There's no reception. Oh God, take my shame. That's, that's, that's labor there. It's labor in prayer and faith. It's not just an activity. In all labor, there is... <laughs> Goodness. It takes diligence. Please sit down, sit down, Pastor. If you are not diligent, listen very carefully, my brothers and my sisters. There is nothing you will ever do and achieve in life 
if you neglect diligence. There are many, many men of God. For instance, I was listening to Bishop Oedeko's um, lecture at, at Benson Idahosa, the university there, commemorating um, Mama Idahosa's birthday. And I mean, that, that great man of God at that age was just crying out his life. Many people believe life is so cheap. They just think just because there is the anointing that can accelerate a factor. They believe that the anointing is a basis for laziness and lack of diligence. Many of us here, the missing ingredient is that we are not diligent. Diligence does not mean you are not moving. You are not moving strategically. You are just busy around trying to hustle. What business are you doing? Oh yeah, let me join now. What are you doing? Let me just apply. I will apply everywhere by faith. You believe that what you are doing. Uh -uh. Let me show you something. Luke chapter 14, please. Let's read two verses, 28 and 29. I hope God is talking to someone. Luke chapter 14, 28, please. Luke chapter 14, 28. Read with me, Koinonia. One to read. For which of you intending to build a tower? Hold on. So you, you have an intention. You have a vision. You have a goal. But the Bible says the first thing you do is not to go and buy cement. The first thing you do is to do what? Sit down. And then count the cost. Whether you have sufficient to not start it. Finish it. You can know you have what it takes to finish it before you start. Otherwise, the Bible will not talk about it here. You can know that I have capacity to finish this vision. Next verse. Less happily, after he had laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him. In fact, let's, let's read the next verse. Saying, this man began to build, continue till I ask you to stop, and was not able to finish. Remember, we're talking of completion here, finishing. Next verse. Or what king going to make war against another king, seated not down first, and consulted whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000? Are we together? that you become strategic about your life not just to take action many young people pray in tongues they fast dry as soon as they are done they just get up just because the holy spirit told them do a and b they just get up foolishly they, there is no they, they don't have that strategic approach to life a man comes with his wife look at this you are married to your wife and you are acting as if, how will the finances be run? The spirit God is faithful, is he not in this life? You are not diligent. Let's pray. Wonderful. But you are not diligent. There is no planning. There is no strategic approach. Are we together? You have real issues that need to be dealt with. But you just find a way of spiritualizing it and throw everything. Faith is not foolishness. You are sitting down. Let me show you diligence. How much do we have now? 20,000 per month. How much do you need? 200,000 per month. We are, we are far from the goal, but at least we are aware of what we have. The miracle comes when you know what you have first. Remember, what you have in your house is already a sign that you are about to receive a miracle. Are we together? Yes. If you have 20,000 naira in your house and you are a pastor, that means there's no organizing conference. <laughs> There's no organizing any breakthrough service in the name of any hilarious vision. We are not diligent and we are not strategic. How many pastors are consistently in debt because they continue to organize conferences borrowing money and they tell you it's God that did it and they wept themselves in a lot of shame and reproach. You borrow one million, invite five men of God who come for four, now, you think that just because it is spiritual, you are not strategic about your life. You will never prosper and you will not do well that way. Are we together? A man is starting a ministry 
and all, no members. There's no track record of loyalty. And you go and rent a venue where you are paying 100,000 per month or per week. Believers, if you don't listen to what I'm telling you, you will be surprised that your life is not making progress. A tongue-talking, born-again believer is receiving salary of 50,000. You will find him in Zaria Suya spot. He will buy five chicken. One for apostle. One. You think just because you are buying for apostle means you are, you are not diligent. If one chicken is say 3,000 and you buy five, 15,000, what percentage of your salary is that? All of a sudden you will find out two months later on that you forgot that your child's school fees is coming. Is it not funny how people forget they have children and then two weeks to resumption or three days, they'll say, ah, sorry, yo. where is the PTA letter? You are not diligent. It's not about having money or not having money. The same way people come to church, when they now say time for offering, they are surprised. You are not diligent. You are not strategic about your life. You just stand and guess while the offering is coming. Quickly, you just touch your pocket, bring out everything and drop it. You are not intentional about life. I tell you why many things are not working for us. We are praying. We are happy. But we are not getting the level and the kind of productivity that should be done. I prayed, I fasted, but I took out time, the entire retreat. I'm not just going as the spirit leads. There is something intentional to be inculcated in the people. And because of that, it demanded two days. It's not God that told me two days. The wisdom of the word and the level of investment I seek to produce in your life in these two days necessitate two days of training. The first dimension of being diligent is not hard work. It's being strategic. Being strategic helps your energy to be worth it. Many of us are dissipating energy, but we are shadow boxing. Apostle, it's not like I'm sitting down. I'm moving. I'm doing something. What are you doing? Have you thought about what you are doing? There are people who can start 10 businesses in one month. It's a sign that they are not diligent. They were not strategic over what they are doing. I just want to do something. I want to get my hand doing something. You are just hard working. You are not diligent. A diligent person will sit down. You will look at your lifestyle. You will look at your goals and your vision. You will look at what capital you have. The knowledge, the level of knowledge you have. You look at that business relative to your service. Relative to your life as a workforce person. You look at every other factor. How long do I want to do this business? Is it just to help me get capital for something bigger? Or this is a line of interest I seek to pursue? There's no diligence. That's why there is no sustainability in the things we do. We just jump at whatever we hear is happening. And do you know, let me tell you this. When you, when you continue failing for a long time, you will stop believing yourself. I've seen a lot of pastors, men and women of God, very anointed people, but they come to me and say, Apostle, why, why, why is my life like this? And I look at them, I say, do you know, sometimes they can even tell me, as I'm talking to you now, I'm on a dry fast, three days. You know, three days dry fast is not easy. Try it. Three days fasting itself is, is but dry. When dry means no water, no nothing. And the person is, you are seeing the spiritual sacrifice. And the person is saying, I thought this thing comes by it. And you are saying, no. Let me tell you what you are doing wrong. I will not become your member. There are many things you don't know. You are not diligent. The man who tells you he wants members has not sat down to really think of what it means to be a pastor over members. He's not planned it. Ask him, have you done your homework to one those members? He says, I can preach. By the grace of God, I'm anointed. I'm a mighty prophet. I'm an apostle of God. Is that all it takes to run a church? Are you seeing that now? A lot has not happened. We ignore all of these things. 
and then he sees and says oh one day we will take the nations in the name of jesus according to my vision i saw doors opening uh-huh what do you think will happen so we just sit down feel like uh let's do a conference light and glory prophetic encounter season one you start now i'm not being sarcastic you just sat down and thought okay what is this conference supposed to do to my members what is it supposed to do relative to their spiritual level relative to the level of ministry relative to our finances i'm bringing one guest minister from ghana i'm bringing one guest minister from london i'm adding apostle joshua selman from it what is your budget for the conference two million what is your entire church offering for a year five hundred thousand god is faithful you see that that is already a recipe for a struggling pastor forever i don't care what kind of tongues he prays there are many believers that don't have plan to one day have their own house you see it in their life show me your notebook under god that i know that i'm in one small room but i'm already planning and these are the steps i am being strategic let me tell you this i stand before the god of heaven come ejimi be my witness there is nothing you see being done in koinonia today that i did not say will happen he will tell you nothing absolutely nothing i can bring notebooks for you and show you where i wrote these things and i wrote everything that will be done when koinonia was going to start i told you that i saw cgc bigger than this it was small but i saw it expand it's not just vision so we began to prepare when the lord showed me that nations were going to come and all of these things i sat down i said it takes a lot i studied the seven largest churches in every continent of the world it's not just prayer and fasting alone you have to be strategic at a particular level of ministry that i get to i may not be outside on a bike again somebody will embarrass me will i have the financial level at that time to at least have a car what if koinonia needs to run gen 24 hours these are things thank you sir thank you so much these are things that many people never plan for you just sit down and say let's have another baby and god is watching you say you, you i did you hear yourself let's have another baby You see, Nigerians and Africa, we continue to punish ourselves and we continue to make a fool of God because we are not strategic. The baby comes and the man does not know what to do. They are confused and he's angry. You are the stupid woman. Why didn't you advise me when I said, let's have a baby? Say, is it my fault? And, and, all of, and the baby who is innocent there is watching. I say, well, so what is, what is going on now? What are you going to do with me? If I ask many of you here, my dear brothers and sisters, don't stand up. But if I say, how many of you are in ministry? Not will be in ministry, are in some kind of ministry. Many people will stand up. And I look at you. If I say after 10 years, many people will be struggling. They will get angry. They will say, Apostle is proud. He's talking nonsense. He's being stupid. But I said this thing years ago that many ministries will struggle in the future because I saw by the Spirit that there were certain demands that 21st century ministry will require. And I said, Lord, I don't want to be stupid. I want you to show me what are the systems that will take to accept and God said if you can sit down and you are willing to pay the price I will show you when I was saying some of these things people laughed at me others insulted me others said a lot of things it's amazing how I look at people today and I look at the way they are languishing in the squallow of ignorance God is the builder of all but let me tell you every house is built by someone yes diligence involves being strategic you have to sit down and plan in the name of jesus god is faithful but i have to plan 
What is the system for making sure everyone gets filled with the Holy Ghost in Koinonia? It's not enough to be anointed. Imagine that you did not put that system in place. A time will come, half of your members are not filled with the Holy Ghost. My God, that is some, that is some, some Babylon in your church. When half of the members are not filled with the Holy Ghost, you are in trouble already. What is the system in place for all of this? It's part of being diligent. Number two, diligence involves sacrifice. Mm. Many of us miss it in this area. Sacrifice is a non-negotiable price. If you want to ever be great, the sacrifice of prayer, the sacrifice of prayer, you see, the sacrifice of fasting, the sacrifice of staying till you understand the word of God. God is my witness whom I serve. I don't know how many hours I've slept from yesterday till today. And it's going to be a marathon into the week, just going. Don't get me wrong, I rest. But every man knows uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. You see that? While you are sleeping and praying, oh God, bless these people in this retreat. Open their eyes. Let Koinonia service today be powerful. Bring the people. Let there be miracles. Let there be signs. Let there be wonders. My brothers and my sisters, no matter what God has given you, the sacrifice dimension of success is something you must come to terms with. It will cost you. We are a generation that likes comfort too much. We are a generation that likes pleasure too much. We are a generation that is so averse to sacrifice. The moment you have to constrain yourself a little, we complain and shout and ramble. Yet if you see the kind of results we want, it takes, it takes a lot of sacrifice. Take sacrifice. Someone sent me a text and said, Apostle, why are you not responding to me? I've been calling you and you are not responding. What is this? And I just look, I said, this, this man does not know the hundreds of text messages that I get every day and the things that I have to do. I was counseling people yesterday counseling people in lagos i already knew i was going to miss my flight i told this my people i said you guys should just go to the airport i'll find my way just go i knew i was going to miss my flight but the people that i was is it was a strategic counseling and i said no 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 let me miss the flight you just go and they went as soon as we're done i went to the airport got the next flight that could come to abuja instead of just flying down to kaduna and coming to rest i had because of sacrifice i routed down to abuja and then from there now from the airport back i arrived in the night as soon as i arrived i just went refresh myself and went to work immediately apostle joshua selman someone sent me a text and said apostle we are proud of you we saw that in lagos they gave you an award i said don't look at the award Look at the hands that collected that award. The sacrifice. We like pleasure. We like clapping. But the inner price. The price. Apostle, what do you do that people are just blessed like this? What do you do that they are not you? You are just talking and people are jumping up and down. My brother and my sister, it's not a charm. It's a price. Even a charm has a price. My police will not just give you a charm because you want to be diabolic. Do you know how much you are going to pay? It's a price. I can't remember the last time in my life I watched a movie. I have television, but it's off. I can't remember the last time the TV in my room was on. Honestly, sincerely. Why did you buy it then? I must enjoy you. It's my money. Then you will never become anything in life. There is a huge price. Please, young people, listen. Being young does not mean to be indisciplined and careless. You must be ready to be serious and pay the price it takes. Nobody just follows a leader just because of anointing. 
it's a combination of many factors including a track record of consistency every member wants to know that the leader they follow is visionary enough there must be predictability to your destiny and your vision your life and whatever your mission is must be well articulated for anyone to follow you otherwise they'll come and receive miracles and just go away human beings are not stupid they are first human beings before members of any church sacrifice say i receive grace to be sacrificial hmm. sacrifice when you carry the money you should buy a book with and read and you buy shoe because you saw somebody buy a shoe of hundred thousand you allow a luciferian spirit to deceive you to go and buy a shoe of hundred thousand to prove a point you are not ready for the sacrifice dimension of greatness let me tell you it's not just when you have you spend there are times that a door can be open but you close it yourself because you know the time has not come it's not every open door that means God has licensed you to pass the door does not have to be closed to know it's not time it can be open but you limit it by yourself and close it because there is a season of appearing Is God speaking to us? Sacrifice. Many of us are comfortable with little results. That's why you find out that my many brothers and sisters, men of God around this nation and the world, they never go far. They start small, small signs and wonders, small membership, small miracle, small testimony, and you know that arrival mentality. I look at myself and say, Apostle, you've not started though. You've not started at all you never come to my house i have received so many awards you never come to my house and see one picture that i snapped with a governor or a politician or somebody from the presidency you will not find one i don't trust them they are deceptive you won't find any award on my table this he received award from this one this one he met with this governor this one he met with this you it's not joshua selman those things are deceptive I push them. What you find is my future on my table, not my past. Fill me up till I overflow. I want to run over. I want to run over. Fill me up till I overflow. I get hundreds of text messages every day apostle you are a sign and wonder the apostle of our time great man there is a testimony apostle we've been trusting God for a child for eight years remember you spoke to us now the child has come apostle let me have your account number we want to be sending this and that and sometimes I put my phone in front of me like this and I look at it I said Lord deliver me from deception and complacency deliver me compared to where we are going this is only a step out of the cave there are still lands to conquer there are still territories what have we seen that we brag about there are deep things in the spirit when you have an arrival mentality you will never see the need to sacrifice to sacrifice in this kingdom you don't arrive oh. you don't arrive all those who arrive are the ones who are no longer relevant when God is moving is God speaking to us many of us here are not willing to sacrifice show me what you are willing to sacrifice to be prosperous show me what you are willing to sacrifice to be truly anointed show me what you are willing to sacrifice Apostle, I like movie. I'm like that. We are all, we are in our family. It's a gift. It's not a gift. It's an appetite you have refused to curb. It can be a gift. Even if you are called into the movie industry, it takes diligence to sit down and plan. can be a gift. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, some of us need to trust God for grace to off that laptop, off that phone, off that television, 
and say, television, I'm tired of watching other people fulfill their assignment. I'm ready to sit down. Lord, you are calling me into a strong apostolic ministry. I open my Bible, not TV. There is a time to watch TV. But in the name of Jesus, I sit down. When others are sleeping, you wake up. Your eye wants to close. They don't try it. Don't try it. I'm going far. Jacos kapata kata. Lord, open my eyes. And you are hearing one message. You are about to rest more. There's another worship backing you up. Then there is another prayer confession as you are stretching fire on your spirit because you are preparing for an extraordinary life. Men of God, there is no shortcut to this thing. Let's not mock God. There is no shortcut. That blood must really flow. The way to the throne is the cross. There is no other way. Hallelujah. And you sit down. The, 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 the sacrificial dimension of diligence. There are times that God will demand from you. I have 10,000. That's all I have. And God says, carry it and give me. And you sit and say, God, no. You are, uh, if you are really God, your mercies endure, you are new every morning. All those statements of unbelief. You carry that thing by faith and say, Lord, I'm, I'm, let me be stupid for you. Let me tell you this. Show me a man who is no longer afraid of pain. I show you a man that Satan cannot do anything about. When you, when you master pain and it no longer touches you, the devil will put his hand on his head and say, what do I do with this person? Because pain is his edge in your life. The moment you are uncomfortable, you run away from that thing. The cave you fear holds the miracle you look for. That cave. The cave that you are afraid of is because the treasure you seek is there. You must trust God for grace and roll that stone and enter into that graveyard, eyes closed, and say, Lord, if I perish, I perish. Is God speaking to us? Yes. Say sacrifice. Say it. Shout sacrifice. The sacrifice of your time. The sacrifice of your energy. Many of you see what God is doing through this ministry. Did you know that sometimes as early as 6 or 7 in the morning, the workers are already at work. You see this guy standing. The worship team is behind me. Male and female. No difference when you are in the worship team. They are standing there. So when you hear me raise a song and they are singing, it's not robots. Human beings. Behind everything that works is a man making it work. Behind everything that works. If you eat a delicious meal, someone stood in the midst of the smoke to cook it. If your cloth is nice, someone paid the price to iron it. Please let us settle it once and for all. Nothing just happens. If you are fed spiritually, at the back of that revelation is someone's sacrifice. We devalue the sacrifices of men in Nigeria. You look at young people talking about men of God. And they have zero revelation, zero result, zero discipline, zero vision. Yet they sit down and tear men of God. They talk about men of God. This guy is more anointed than this. This one is more sound. Ah, that other guy in, uh, in, in Ghana. Oh, have you seen the one in this? Oh, and they sit down and analyze. Any day you see sacrifice, don't pretend you didn't see it. Stop by and salute it. Even if you are in a hurry, the moment you see a man with blood and the scars of sacrifice, please don't pass and ignore it. Stop and say, I salute the investment of God upon your sacrifice. It's the reason why when we finish service, we allow our elderly ones to sit down. It's not just because of favoritism. The sacrifice of time. The sacrifice of life. The precious workers in this ministry. Some of them have been working since morning. Some of them will only go back early in the morning. And some of them by, by early in the morning, they are going to start their work. Sacrifice. The koinonia you are getting blessed by. Many of you, when I mention a scripture, you see it here. At the back of this result is someone who is paying the price to make sure they do it well. What do you want in life? Are you willing to pay the price? 
Or are you willing to let the price be paid for you? No. Say, I receive grace to be sacrificial. One more time, say, I receive grace. Show me a man of God that will sacrifice in prayer, that will sacrifice in mentorship, that will sacrifice in the word, whose heart is open to understand the systems of God. My brother and my sister, I show you a man of God that no devil, no power, no cause, no charm in existence can stop. Show me a man who is willing to settle down and understand God's financial systems and pay the price. I show you a man who will wave poverty forever and wave it goodbye forever. Show me a man who is ready to pay the price to be diligent enough to be valuable. I show you a man who will never beg. Never beg. Never beg. Something happened when we were traveling to Lagos. Very humorous story. Let me just say it. I got into the plane and then I saw, I saw a couple and their mother. They were shouting at Paul. So I said, these people have come to embarrass me now. And they were happy. And then when we got down, the mother came and hugged me. Said she has been listening to my message. My son, let's snap. And we're snapping and the mother just squeezed some money. I said, mama, don't do this. I don't know you. I said, you, I'm, you must collect you. And I said, ah, this is somebody's salary. And somebody is saying you must collect. The key is not anointing. It's value. Value. If you are not valuable, no mama will stand behind you. A, a wise son makes a glad father. A foolish son is a reproach to his mother. Nobody will be proud of you for not doing nothing. Let me tell you the truth. I'm being hard on us. I love you. Our retreat has started, workers. Value. Stop packaging, faking, lying. Settle down and say, in Jesus' name, I must get this thing. Stop looking for money. And trust God to piece together all the spiritual resources to be valuable. They were carrying my luggage and then I sat down somewhere at the airport. And the next thing I saw some group of boys. I know how people look at me. I just know that they're about to embarrass me again. They came and said, Apostle, ha, ah, Jesus, this and that and that. I was sad because I missed my flight. I was on my way to pick another flight to come back. And then I get into the plane and I see someone looking at me. Apostle, and he shouted, Jesus. I quietly went and I sat down. There was a space between me and the next person. True story. Yesterday. The guy got up and left his workmate and came to me that he wants i said no you want to embarrass me here we started creating a scene and you know how people in the plane got ah they were happy the guy said i'm not going he wanted to kneel down there i said what is all this now ah this is a, a flight that is taking us the guy said he must sit down close to me i said okay he sat down close to me when everything was done i didn't know that all through that flight he was busy packaging a lot of money he works in abuja and he just carried that. I said, no, 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 I won't collect. I will just bless you. And I said, once upon a time in my life, this is what I needed to eat dinner. And Jesus was still Lord. If you are not valuable, nobody will reward you. My brothers and my sisters, success is not a charm. If you are not valuable, nobody will reward you. Stop making demand of, from life when you are not giving anything back. It's a scam to demand from life and not give anything back so after you he said this charge i give unto you my son timothy that you wore a good warfare the warfare is not just fighting demons you are wrestling with prophecy in the name of jesus a word has come that god is my ebenezer to help you means you are doing something Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm going to settle down and take my life seriously. Why is it that my help has passed me and there is nothing? It's like a stench from my life driving them. Why is nobody coming to sponsor my ministry? Something is wrong. Value. I don't share these testimonies to brag. I told you about my pastor friend who someone called him and said, please, do you know apostle he said yes he said i'm going to transfer money to you send it to him for me the thing paying the man of god he called me and said apostle what is this somebody doesn't know you and knows me then now sends money to my account and say i should transfer it to you 
I just cracked a joke and we laughed and laughed. He's my very good friend. Value. You can make up your mind and say in the name of Jesus, I will pay my children's school fees the whole session from the beginning of every year. And then when you are prophesied like that, you carry your spirit, your head, your mind into the room where the spirit of God breathes upon people. And you say, Lord, there has to be a way. There has to be a way. I can tell you this, my brothers and my sisters. When you mean business, the gate of destiny must open. The reason why many of us have not forced that, that gate must be broken. He has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. The gate of destiny will not open when you stand and just speak English. Oh, gate, I'm standing here. No, stories, you are, you are mocking yourself. Gate, you must open. You must open. You didn't open for my father. Look at what he said, him and his wife, that nobody ever married legally. I'm sure he made up his mind. In the name of Jesus, I must marry a wife by paying a dowry and going to church. When he was saying it, the evil force, he said, let's see what will happen. I did it for your father and your mother. Let me tell you something. Sacrifice is a covenant. When you make up your mind to sacrifice, it's like entering a covenant with God. Gather unto me, my saints, 50 verse 5, Psalms. They that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Number three, diligence involves resilience and tenacity. Now, this is where I want to talk a little and then we'll pray for tonight. Please sit down. Everybody say resilience. Everybody say tenacity. Come. Hold me. Try to resist me as I'm moving. This is how life is. No destiny will not allow you cut walk to the promised land. No, sir. There are not only giants in the gate. The giant starts from Egypt. They will pursue you. It's not just the giants on the promised land. There are giants where you are going. There are forces that will stop you. So you are, to, hold me again. You are trying to move forward. And these devils that have stopped everybody want to stop you. It takes faith. You will fail many times. And you say, Satan, I will wear you by my consistency. Whoever told you that just because God spoke to you, you will succeed at first. There is difference between failure as an event and failure as a person. Believers, this is where we miss it. The average Christian, when he fails once, he will bring all kinds of jargons around and excuse and say, you see this, this and that. And Christians, we are very good at making people to stop rising. The moment you do something, you, you, God told you you are going to take worship to the nations. Your first album, you bought it by yourself. Say, oh, I won't disgrace myself like this again. Sorry, Mr. Man. That means you are not ready to get to the nations. Life rewards tenacity. You put the first album, it doesn't work. You say, I know I didn't get anything right, but at least it gave me exposure. Let's go to write the second song. The first one, I just composed nonsense. The second one, I'm not just going to involve the Holy Spirit alone. I will involve a music director. So both the Holy Spirit and a music director is involved to help you balance some of the things that will make people like us not to buy it. Are we together? And now, by the time you balance it, your second album comes with a greater level of professionalism. A day will come, you'll be standing on a stage and somebody will be waiting with a check outside to give you what would have been your bill for the first entire production the first time. Whoever told you champions become champions from day one. Don't you know that f success is overcoming many failures? You never qualify to be great if you cannot ignore failure and keep moving. God is speaking to someone already. 
Man of God, just because you started ministry and nobody is patronizing your grace, just because you started ministry, every sick body you prayed for looked at you and warned you and they told you to never, never come for their conference again. Just because the first sermon you made a mistake, you forgot the scripture because of tension. Anointing will not drive tension like that. It takes experience to drive tension. You will need to do this thing many times. Ramble on the stage more than once, twice. And then eventually one day you will now begin to gain yourself. You can articulate. Do you know what it means to be talking and looking at people and they are looking at you back? Especially if they are frowning at you. You crack a joke, nobody laughs. You forget the scripture. No amount of prayer will take that thing away. It's a track record you must create. So it's not a spiritual problem. It's, a, it's just the, the, the challenge you face on your road to greatness. You don't go back and say, oh God, but I fasted now. What evil spirit, and no evil spirit entered you. Consistency. Consistency. A day will come, you will build confidence. You will be able to look at people and preach. Is God speaking to us? Say in the name of Jesus. I will wear failure until I succeed. The word wear there doesn't mean to put it on. It means to wear it. If my expression is not correct, find your own. The idea is frustrate failure till you succeed. Look, let me tell you, failure can be tired. I found out by experience that failure is personified like a being that can say, okay, I'm tired of this guy. Go, pass and the gate opens and you walk gallantly. I can tell you stories of my failures and you will be surprised. I remember praying for somebody years ago. They took me to pray for someone on wheelchair. I think I've shared it in maybe 2012 or 13. I went full of the Holy Ghost. Those days you fasted and prayed for everything. Even if they say lead praise and worship. I prayed for, I, I took out time. If you see the level of revelation I shared, and yet when the time came to pray, all in the final analysis, I prayed, I laid hands, and I know the man had faith. Because faith comes by hearing. That guy gave me all his attention. I knew his spirit was in what I was saying. Let me give you a little testimony. Let me come. <laughs> Let's laugh a little. You see this guy here? I love it, Jimmy. Let me tell you this. When I started teaching them how to get people filled with the Holy Ghost and the principles of impartation, something happened one day. I left a Jimmy and one lady. He was together filled with the Holy Ghost. You see, when you see him talk now, you are flying from your chair. It's a track record. I remember Jimmy talking with the lady in, you know he's very intelligent. He shared every revelation when he finished. He now tried, the lady was tired. She said, I'm, I'm tired, this thing. I mean, it's so, it pained him. And then, I, I can't remember the story exactly. I think he called on me. And I came, and I mean, in less than one minute, that lady was, and we were going home. And Jimmy was gloomy. He just said, but ah, that at least if she fell down, he knew he would have helped her faith. I remember comforting him and said, don't worry. Do you know why I'm taking out time to act this drama? So that you can be healed from that lie the devil is telling you. Amateurism is allowed in the school of success. Every professional was once a student. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't be ashamed of being a student. Just make sure you continue. So when you go for the meeting, and just like Apostle taught you, your blood is hot from SOM graduation. You received fire here and you just organized a meeting. And in the name of Jesus, you waited for word of knowledge. You were surprised. Nothing happened. The crusade, you prayed, said, I sense the anointing here. And the person who fell was there. And you just, everybody is looking at your error. And as soon as they shared the grace, you went back and said, Kai. Of course, God will always leave himself with a witness. But you go back feeling, Lord, Abba. if I was wrong, couldn't you have even just done it? And then we can settle it later. God says, no, pass through it. 
is a track record. The day you are coming down from your car and a blind eye is opening, that day people look at you and say, how did you start? You say, my brother, I didn't start with a blind eye opening. I started with finishing a service like funeral. <laughs> because nothing happened. Prophesy to someone, say, pay the price. Pay the price. Say, pay the price honorably. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ask every doctor here, when they were students, the things they laugh about now was once a thorn in the flesh. Ask every lecturer here, when they were teaching him what he's now teaching the students, he didn't smile at some of the things. Abi Pastor Alpha, you can look at some of them and say, this thing is hard. Yet today you are the one teaching it. Hallelujah. So you stand today and declare in the name of the Lord. And someone is blessed. You are learning the principles of finance and favor. You get up with that zeal and go and start a business. You start a popcorn machine with the fire from the book you read. And you eat your popcorn alone. Nobody comes. You just say it's an evil spirit. No, sir. Look, let me tell you this. If you learn this tonight, you will not be ashamed of your pain again. The next time things go wrong, it's not always demonic. Sometimes you just say, Lord, I thank you. Look at the apostles. Think how many times they were embarrassed. Do you know what it means to be mentored by Apostle Jesus? This is Jesus we are talking about, the Apostle of our faith. Having mentored some guys full of grace and truth. And then they went to pray for an epileptic patient. Mentored directly by Jesus, not John, not Moses. And they laid hands on that guy. In the name of Jesus. And the guy was not healed. The people would have beat them there to kill them if Jesus didn't come on time. But a time came, hallelujah. Peter, when Peter is in a room, they line sick people, not for a crusade. Peter is about to pass, and his shadow, mastery, they call it, mastery. A realm and a dimension had come. Did you know once upon a time in my life, I would never speak for someone to fall under the anointing? No, I would lay hands, then you will fall. So if I want five of you to receive any impartation, I will patiently follow. I didn't have the luxury of just making a statement. Where, who, who dashed monkey banana? But you ask the devil in the pit of hell. Ask him. He knows. That you stand and make one pronouncement and open the tulip gate over men's destinies. It's not just an impartation. It's a track record. Are we together now? Listen, tonight, I want you to know that failure is not the end. It's a pathway to success. This is the level where many of you are now. That's why I'm explaining to you. You are there now and you are praying and nothing is happening. Lord, come through for me now and it looks like your heavens are closed. And you are already getting angry. You are already getting frustrated. Father... I thought Apostle said that if we finish dancing, I've danced and danced and danced. I put my prayer request. I danced through the night. It happened to me too. Don't think it just manifested. Let me tell you something. The future you are trying to enter, a large part of it by God's grace have entered. I can tell you what to expect. It will do you like a dream. The day... The day the legal claims of your training is over, you will wake up one morning into a realm that you say, God, tell me it's a joke. What is this? What is this? See, a day will come, you will look at your life and not find any scar. And you are saying, where did it go to? And God says, enjoy the blessings of your endurance. When you see someone going to NDA, you see how they treat him when he's going to what they call the first level. Tamawan? Yes. But by the time that gentleman is about to stand and give his last parade, he stands with honor. The fearful, weak guy five years ago is now the warrior of today. They can send him to Maiduguri and he says, where is Boko Haram? I'm ready to face them. Some of what you are going through... God gives you victory many times by bringing your fear and you together. 
there is a relationship between your fear and you and the spirit of courage sometimes running away from your fear will destroy you so god makes you strong by making you stare at your fear until you become friends your fear will no longer run away from you is it not the rent you stand with the landlord you stand with the policeman and finally you will learn that police does not kill landlord does not kill you no longer fear then the miracle comes and god will say it's not that i could not supply it i wanted to build your heart so that you are strong notice that every time you fail if you use it well it can impart faith in your heart this is something until you are in the school of the spirit it will never make sense hallelujah you can turn your fears to your miracle man of god the fact that you gave a word of knowledge oh i'm seeing pastor james on you he said no my name is pastor alpha uh, your your wife you married judith say no sir if you are not if you are not serious we will drive you here my wife is called annie you do you, you have five sons no sir we have two two i'm seeing a girl no sir i have a boy and you turn back and say god if you didn't send me why embarrass me i can go back to i can use my accounting can what is it a bank i can't go and walk in a bank and god says you are a prophet to the nations let me tell you do you know while you are help him oh my god you see that do you know that while you are complaining god never talks to you about that issue he gives you another assignment he now says all right that lady go and meet her stand before her before i'll tell you what to say say mm -mm. god what is her name first say no Just go and stand and you now say young lady no i'm not this kind of guys if you think i'm saying no 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 i know you are somebody's wife god just sent me so yeah talk fast already the, your your hearing is hazy by her shout listen he's training you so that the day you stand over a nation and say the lord said i should speak over this nation no matter who writes an article writing nonsense you have been immune there is a vaccination you have received all these people that cry over little persecution you were not trained well in the school of the spirit is god speaking to us Oh, God is calling me to be a kingdom millionaire. And God says, so you're 50,000. And he said, Lord, please, I, I, is he you? Confirm it in a dream. And you have five dreams in the night to show you it is him. You even see yourself giving it. You ask God to confirm every other thing. You, won't, you will have a close heaven. But confirm this one at once it will come. And you keep giving like a fool. Until one day someone advises you and say, look, I know that... You know this destiny we take it easily and god says listen to me and one day in one year when the rewarder of men ah, oh, 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 my help has come Listen, I will never forget the first time in my life I started seeing a strange manifestation of the Holy Spirit. It was during our second crusade. I remember going to minister in a church. That was the first time I would mention people's names and see them run out by the anointing. Like I mentioned your name and you run out. I said, what is this? I've never seen this. The signs don't go before. The signs don't go with. They follow you listen many of us believers let me teach you you are in a season right now where your failure does not mean God is not speaking are you hearing what I'm saying please listen very carefully the fact that you may not get it right physically does not mean the anointing is not on you the fact that you did the business and it failed does not mean that kingdom financing anointing is not on you the fact that you preached and your message looked like nonsense all the revelations you gathered evaporated is not demonic it's a track record go through it and see what you will make out of your life you pray for the first person he's not healed say lord while i'm learning what i did wrong who will i pray for again and god will say there is a cancer patient stage four in shika i said lord this is too much 
don't embarrass me like that and god says well it's up to you you can choose to disobey me when you look at that cancer patient even you by yourself you you'll be afraid what did you come to do here i i, I came to pray god sent me nail i was and he said oh, yeah pray let's see as soon as you pray on your way going out you see that the person has died they say if if you are not careful we will arrest you and you go back and say god what did i do is it not the call and god says no son you continue i am birthing a mighty healing ministry to you a day will come listen a day will come in and through your life is no longer the issue of who is healed or who is not healed again your ego has been so strong it's now about obedience not results that is the day you will pass somebody on a wheelchair and he will get up you didn't plan the idea was not to pray for the sick but you had gotten to a point in the spirit where you are not an amateur again this is how god builds this man that you see my goodness i can't begin to tell you about my failures you think it's every message i preached that was impressive no what you see today is a track record of many years man of god i bring you a word of hope don't let any man despise you you know sometimes we men of god we have a way of intimidating especially younger people and we make them look like there's no hope for you it's a lie if god brought me where i am there is nobody that cannot rise with greater fire and grace don't fake visions if you are not seeing it be patient you can see a real vision start where you are and be patient Take the risk. You will make mistakes, not you may, you will. But don't allow it dampen you. You have to believe in your destiny enough to know. Apostle, look at what I'm doing. My life is empty. God, where are you? Uh -uh. Uh -uh. You may think that you had a revelation that this guy is your husband, this girl is your husband, you go and meet her and say, sorry, I'm engaged. And you go back and say, God, but you spoke to me. He says, no problem. You are learning how to hear. You are learning spiritual precision. A day will come, you will be a master and your voice will be like the voice of God upon the earth. And when they look at you, remember, remember, brothers and sisters, little Samuel too had a problem when he was hearing God. The man whose word never fell to the ground. A day came, he said, is it God or not God? Eli, I'm not sure. The Bible captures the story of his learning. But now look at Samuel, a man like a God upon the earth. Another man looks at him and his donkey starts going back home. What changed? A track record of consistency. Are you ready to pray? Diligence. Add diligence to everything that has happened an unbending resilience lord you have called me into the worship ministry even if nobody invites me i will continue writing songs lord they may not place a demand on my grace but i will continue i will give my best to it i will pay the price brothers and sisters i guarantee you this that looks like a simple message if you pay attention tonight you will wear life out until the gate is open for you lift your voice and begin to bless him pray in the spirit for a few minutes
may not have the finances now, but I continue to create the track record. Zapakato Sheketa. The call is sure. My brother, hear me. Don't doubt your call. Don't doubt your anointing. Don't just use results to validate that you are called. Yes, you are called. There is destiny upon you, and the nations will hear your voice. You may not have all the results now, but be patient. Be strategic. Be sacrificial. Be resilient. Listen to me. Listen. Moses was ordained and anointed to be a deliverer. He didn't know how to do it. He killed an Egyptian because he was not strategic. God took him. God did not take away the assignment. God showed him how he would do it. It will be by a rod, not a knife. Moses, you are called, but you are using the wrong tools. Some of you, you are called, but the tools you are using is why you are failing. You are called into business, but the tools you are using. You are called into ministry, but how you were mentored is why things are not working. The information given to you, it is true that you are a deliverer. You are called into the prophetic, but the way they taught you the prophetic is why it looks like divination. You were called into wealth and abundance, but the person who mentored you may have been a greedy person and he made it look like the call to kingdom wealth is a call to materialism. Lord, correct my strategy. Lift your voice and pray. Correct my strategy. Something is wrong, not with the vision, not with the assignment. The strategy may be wrong. Lord, correct my strategy. There is a way I'm doing ministry. That's why I'm not getting results. It's not the call. It's the strategy. Pray this prayer. Lord, correct my prayer strategy. Correct my Bible study strategy. Correct my leadership strategy. something i know i'm missing something please pray tonight why is my church not growing why is my ministry not growing lord i don't doubt the call but i doubt the strategy correct the strategy listen listen Please look up, everyone. Hear me. Tonight's meeting is very powerful. For many of you, you don't need to correct the vision. You don't need to correct the assignment. You are right. But the strategy is what is making the result to not come. The business you are in is correct. But the strategy, the ministry is correct. But the strategy, you were not supposed to have a church. 
it was an evangelical outfit you went to open a church now nobody is bringing money for cheers let me tell you you are not free till the pattern is given to you the pattern is a strategy it says go and fill seven vessels with water that was a strategy go around Jericho that was the strategy walk on water is not enough to want a miracle Lord reveal the strategy for my result for my result result in ministry result in my spiritual life lift your voice and pray reveal the strategy reveal the strategy Hallelujah. Look up, please. We'll soon be done. I want us to pray over our finances. Look at me. Many of us here, this is where we really need God to come in. God has blessed you with all blessings. Right now, there are many of us, there's not much you can do with your finances. You are going to say, Lord, open my eyes. Where is my strategy? Not our strategy where is my strategy for ministry how do i finance ministry how do i finance my business lord i'm about to get married lord i'm married with three children what is the strategy lift up your voice and pray show me oh god every financial exploit comes with a solid strategy your ministry will never be financed until you receive a strategy. Your life and destiny may never be adequately financed until you receive a strategy. What is the blueprint of God? Please pray, Koinonia. Don't take lightly this prayer. Hallelujah. Listen, please look at me. When it was time to cross the Red Sea, the strategy for Moses was take your rod, stretch it. The river parted, the ground lifted. When it was time for Joshua to lead the people through, listen, the strategy was that the, the I think the, the, the priests, the, the, the Levites or so, went in front and then the Jordan parted when it was time for Jesus the strategy was not to part the water you would die there waiting for water to part whereas the strategy has changed the fact that God is not doing something the way he did it yesterday doesn't mean he's the he's not the one doing it give us this day my strategy give me this day Lord the strategy that started ministry from zero to hundred I've exhausted it what is the strategy from hundred to one thousand what is the strategy Lord the strategy for my finances as a bachelor as a spinster I received it but now I'm married with three children what is the updated strategy for my daily bread Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Someone met me last week, a dear, lovely man of God that I love so much. And he called, he said, Apostle, how are you doing it? You have been transporting people since Koinonia started. You are doing all of these things. You don't raise money. You don't do anything. You don't cajole. You don't invite preachers to raise. How do you do it? 
and I looked at him, I said, my brother, you must stay with God, not just to understand the call. Many of us, once you get the call, you just stand up and start running. No, the strategy is your advantage in any battle. Ask any military man. They call Operation ABC. That ABC is the strategy for the victory. If they say Operation this, the military people know that this is the formula we're using for the takeover. Strategy. When we started, I remember when God came and told me, he said, son, the last meeting for every month is dedicated for a miracle service. It's a strategy. You will just get up blindly and go and make the last meeting of your own program to a miracle service and not get any results because it is a strategy. Every strategy has an anointing on it. You see us gather prayer requests here and I pray on it. For Bishop Oyedeko, his strategy is the power of the spoken word. You may not see anybody fall down under the anointing while he's speaking, but the strategy is that he uses the creative word, power of the word. Or a robot, his strategy was to lay hands. He didn't just speak. If there were 1,000 people, or a robot will lay hands one by one. But if he touches you, be sure you are standing up. Strategy. For Benny Hinn is to worship. Very sensitive, annoying worship sometimes. He can tell everybody, hush. And you are saying, what is this? I remember once upon a time they had a program with Archbishop Benson Idahosa and he was worshipping, worshipping and one time Idahosa came and collected the mic and said rain is coming and Idahosa just started shouting and that's how people started getting healed because the strategies are different. William Branham will stand and say the angel that was assigned to him has not come and that's how he will wear those people there. William Branham will stand like a herbalist and say he's apologizing, let the people be patient and then at a point he will just say the angel has come word of knowledge he will start moving in a strange way and people attacked him he said that's the blueprints that was given every man of god if he sits down and he's honest with you he will tell you the strategy there is how i know the power of god is ready to move i can't teach you i can teach you generically but there is a strategy it's like the palm of your hand is wired for your use as a man of God, I cried to God. I said, Lord, what is the financial strategy for this ministry? Because this ministry will grow. And now, the, the mass media that is supposed to be an avenue, most churches raise finances. A major part of the finance that runs ministry is from the media. And now God is saying, give the messages free. Don't sell anything. Imagine the hundreds of millions of naira that it would have brought. And now it has gone. Lord, you have to reveal it. Ah! When he comes to you, my God, when my God comes to you, he will tell you something that does not make sense. But you are stupid enough to take it as a strategy. You will join those who are clapping for you to wonder and say, Lord, I fear you. Hallelujah. There is a strategy. There is a way we do ministry here. It's a strategy that God gave. For Dr. Olukoya is prayer. He will raise prayer points and you will pray. And while you are praying in that prayer, the power of God is moving and touching people. There are many people. For Papa Ia Deboye, he will stand and in the calmness of his voice, make a prophetic declaration and people will come. For Reverend Dr. Uma Opai, he will raise a song. And while he's dancing and singing, people are rising up. Don't copy strategies. Receive strategies. Listen. I assure you, and I want you to hear me as we round up. Believe me when I tell you this, that you will never fail. You walk with these truths that I teach you. You walk with these things that I tell you. It is arrogant to unnecessarily tamper with the equations. Many people, they don't have results yet, but they tamper with the equations. Receive it with childlike faith. Don't let anybody tell you this thing doesn't matter. Do they have the results you are looking for? 
There are many proud people, and I say this with every sincerity of heart. There are many proud people without results who go around talking against people who have tremendous results. Love everybody, but don't give your ears to people who don't have results. You will become like them. No man can give what he doesn't have. Hallelujah. Can we pray one last prayer point? I want you to challenge the spirit of laziness, lukewarmness. Listen, it says, I would that thou were neither hot, I mean, either hot nor cold. I would, I desire. You are not diligent and you are not completely lazy. You are just somewhere in between. If you are very hot, I can make you hotter. If you are cold, I can know you are cold and help you. But you are dilly-dallying in the middle of nowhere. You are going to pray and cry that laziness, especially the spirit. Many of us sincerely, I love you and I don't mean to hurt or embarrass you, but many of us are extremely lazy. Lazy to a surprising degree, especially for a young man. Lord destroy laziness from my life. Lift your voice and pray. Financial laziness, spiritual laziness, intellectual laziness. Take it away from my life. Take it away from my life. Take it away from my life. Are you praying? to study, diligence to be valuable. Hallelujah. Please permit me to add for us one more request. We are going to pray concerning this issue of value. I'm sure that by God's grace I will speak on it again for workers. But we are going to pray. Listen. 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 If you are not valuable, Koinonia, listen to me. Those outside, those online, listen to me. No matter how you convince yourself, if you want to reign in today's world, what you have must be exceptional. If everybody has what you have, there is no space for you. Did you hear what I said? If everybody has, this is not about competition. If what you have can be given by another person, cheaper or freer, you are in trouble. You must trust God to brand you with a level of value that makes you so unique. No devil of poverty or failure or mediocrity or inferiority hangs around you. I told you that a man of God was praying for me one time. And he laid hands on my head and said, Father, create a problem in his region that only him will be able to solve. I thought, I, in my mind, I felt so bad because I said, Kai, no, I'm somebody who is for the body. I don't like this thing of one person outshining others. What kind of prayer is this? But when I understood value, then I prayed that prayer. And I said, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, create something, oh God, for me. I thought it was a joke. There are many preachers, but there is one Joshua Selma. The same way there are many people, but there is one EGB. There is one, when we want to hear the voice of Sam, Amaka cannot sing like Sam. Sam cannot sing like Amaka. If we want to hear the strings, Elijah and the music director don't play the same thing. Listen, when God makes you exceptionally valuable, sit back and watch the power of the Sabbath work in your life. It will be like a jam. The way men will run and come to you. I tell you this thing. I'm not lying to you. Take away your wrong mindset. Listen to me. You want to prosper and rise in today's world. is more than a job. You need to master value in a way and manner. 
and it will shut the mouth of darkness. I look at my life today. If you listen to what I'm teaching you, my brothers and my sisters, you will sit back and wonder and say, what is this? Life is, it will look unfair. Don't think it's happening just because he's called Joshua Selman. It's not true. It's a law. Can you pray that one prayer as we're ending? I give you two, three minutes. Find a corner and cry to God. Lord, I'm not unique enough. I'm grateful for what you have made me. But I know there's something that you can put upon my life. That every time someone says, Pastor Femi, every time someone says, Pastor Alpha, I thank God for everybody. But that uniqueness, pray. Grant me the grace to be valuable. Hallelujah. Listen, your value is what brands you, is what identifies you as to whether you are rewardable or not. Pastor Lawrence is so good in the graphics. When you needed to, to write the names of School of Ministry students, as anointed as I am, you didn't come to meet me. Because with respect to that, I'm totally not valuable. It's not an insult, it's the truth. Tomorrow, when we want to cook for the workers, you are not going to meet Joshua Selman. Nobody has ever come to meet me for advice on cooking. As sincere as I am. You won't come because you don't consider me that valuable. Nobody has invited me today to sing praise and worship. Does it mean I cannot sing? But I'm not that valuable. There are many options. Why should you be picked when there are easy options to you? I vowed and I told God, I will never go and minister anywhere that they'll say, Mr. Man, thank you. This is your honorarium. Go. And the next time they discuss, when they bring Joshua, they say, no, please. No. I will never do that. So I pay the price in the word. I pay the price in prayer. I pay the price to know what to do and what not to do. That's the key. And it will bring you to to suck the breast of kings. They will give you access to their treasures. Treasures that they will not even give their relatives. And you will stand and wonder and say, life can be this easy. Koinonia, hear me. If no one is looking for you, it's because you are not valuable enough. Don't be angry. Take this truly. If you are not valuable enough, nobody will look for you. Are we together? Yes. There are people I've met in my life. It's amazing how as soon as I met them and discerned their value, those who used to provide that area of value, they are, the doors of my favor towards them closed immediately. There are people like that. Are we together? There are people who were doing one thing or the other for me. It's dangerous if you are easily replaceable. I say it again. It is dangerous when you become easily replaceable. That means in this life, you will not amount to much. The consequence is that you will be angry. You will be resentful. You will hate everyone. That's why I'm an advocate for mastery. You have to trust God for grace to know whatever is granted you grace to do and know it well. If it means adding educational qualification to rise to that position of uniqueness, do it. If it means reorienting your mind, even against what you studied, do it. Whatever price it takes to stand you out. Paul, a man approved of God, you stand out. Not in a competitive way, but in a unique way that brands you. That's why I don't have enemies. I don't insult anybody. 
I don't fight anybody. I'm more than grateful to be me. I don't think it would have happened that way if I were not this valuable. If I were not the one behind all the mighty testimonies by the Spirit of God that this ministry enjoys, probably I would have joined the many people insulting others. Do you know when you have results you don't hate? It's true. It's true. There's no need for it. I live a very happy and peaceful life. That's why I love the body of Christ. I honor everyone. Resentment is a product of an awareness that a replacement is likely to happen to you. But when you stand in a position on part of, look at Benny Hinn. Benny Hinn is friends with him. He can bring any man of God to his program and talk with joy because we are talking of Benny Hinn here. By the privilege of the grace of God, Benny Hinn is Benny Hinn till he goes to be with the Lord. Kenneth Copeland is Kenneth Copeland. You can preach everything. When Kenneth Copeland comes, he is Kenneth Copeland. God's system for faith. insecurity and competition and backbiting and all of these things happen when there is an intrinsic fear that a system of value higher than yours is within a vicinity so rather than fighting you trust God and say Lord lift me the popular hymn says Lord lift me up and let me stand huh? by faith on heaven's table land it says a higher plane than I found Lord set my feet on higher ground that's the prayer. It is not those who like you that bless you alone. It's those who are directed. <laughs> For everybody to like you. Do you know how long it takes to like a man? Sometimes you just need to hear God and obey fast. Your life requires speed. <laughs> Hallelujah. There are times because of what God wants to do in your life, when he finds out that four people need to be blessed to reach you, whether they are praying or not, he will hurry them quickly because they are delaying you. He will hurry them for your sake. When you come for a meeting like this, be conscious of four things. Number one, be conscious of every prophetic word that comes relating to your issues of concern. Be conscious of it. When these words come, don't think they are just empty speakings. The carnal man cannot discern the things of God. The word of God is like a tray. You have to receive the tray before you receive what is on it. Are we together now? The word of God is a tray. It carries miracles, carries deliverance, carries healings. So when you receive the word, the engrafted word, you now take what is in it. Be conscious of the prophetic word. Number two, be conscious of the covenant. Covenant is a very deep spiritual word. Many people just shout covenant around, but they don't even know what it means. Listen, a covenant is a system that commits God and causes him to vow to ensure that a person or an institution continues to receive certain predictable outcomes. It's a covenant. There is the covenant of answered prayer. There is the covenant of God's presence. There is a covenant of results. Every man that God truly calls and every ministry that God truly ordains, there are underlying spiritual covenants. The platform upon which God put his vow and his integrity that as touching this and this, I will make happen. It's true. Also, be conscious of the graces. You see that? The graces that are available within that territory. You cannot receive a man's covenant. You can only partake of it. But you can receive graces. You are a pastor. You come and your church is grounded. You only have 50 members during your annual Thanksgiving. Thank God for that. But something is wrong. God is a God of increase. You can come with hearts open to receive the grace. How about hardship? Things not working well. How about your spiritual growth? You are at the same level for five years. The knowledge of scripture, zero. Health of your prayer life, zero. You are a man of God and nobody is placing a demand on the grace of God that you have. It will frustrate you eventually. But there are graces. Every possibility in the kingdom is governed by an operation of grace. 
when that grace comes upon your life, your result shows. Thou anointest my head with oil. The result shows through my cup. He does not anoint your cup. He anoints your head. Your cup proves what is on your head. Are we together now? So this is very important. Thank you. And you have to understand the way this works. We are going to pray shortly. And I need you to know how this works. I want you to receive. Be conscious of the graces. Not, some of you may not, need, may not need a miracle, like miracle from sickness or whatever. But understand that when you come, it's like an exchange of graces. Listen, the Bible says, give us please, 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. Please give it to us quickly. 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 8. Praise the Lord. Read with me, please, Koinonia. Ready? One to read. Stop, 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 stop. God is able to make all grace. Let me explain that to you. Please, all of you, come. Stand anywhere you want to stand. Just stand anywhere. Scatter yourself around. Don't come close to me. Just stand. Watch this. Call these guys graces. The grace for prosperity, the grace for favor, the grace for speed, the grace for spiritual fire, the grace for influence. Watch this. Access to the hearts of men. This is you. This is your destiny. And the Bible says the way we advance is that we need to be in touch with all graces, not some. I can have the grace for prosperity and I'm rich, but I suffer, but I succeed. You are rich, but no man helps you because you don't have favor. You only have prosperity. The proof of favor is not money. It's the loyalty of men. If you do not have access to the hearts of men, you don't have favor. You may have resources. So this guy has prosperity. So he will labor, wake up in the morning, sleep late in the night, eat the bread of sorrow, mix it with hard work, and eventually prosper. But as far as spiritual fire is concerned the grace that plants in a man the hunger and the passion for the things of god is not in him so that grace is not there he has some but not all and the part the grace dimension he does not have the deficiency of it will show in his life he is getting richer but not as his soul prospers this is the grace he needs when you pray and intercede for this man now, God will answer your prayer by channeling him to a ministry or a man of God that has this dimension so that in addition it will be added to him. Are we together now? Now listen very carefully please. Look up everybody. So God is, one of the things that happens here is that the spirit of God continues to move like a wind and he scans your life which grace do you need in this season that you do not yet have this is one of the biggest miracle that happens in a miracle service most people do not know you sit under this atmosphere and there is an updating it's like a software god finds out that this level you are entering into there are at least 21 graces but as it is there are only four so while the meeting worship is going prayer is going there is an upgrade that grace so here's what the bible says god is able to make hold my hands so you come for koinonia miracle service dry nothing is on your head and nothing is around your life too because what is around you is a is a report card telling what is on you are we together now you obtain the grace that makes for abundance for the sake and the grace for wealth that works in this ministry forces you to love god while you are wealthy if you receive a grace that makes you wealthy and as you are rising in wealth you are leaving god that anointing did not come from this ministry the grace for this ministry has been it has been edited to a covenant to ensure that as men rise their hearts also rise for god the kind of nonsense money that makes you leave God you don't honor anything that has to do with God again no it is as you prosper even as your soul prospers it's Babylon that gives wealth that prospers you and diminishes your soul watch this so you receive this grace and then the Holy Spirit finds out grace for what favor come watch this praise and worship you got this one during praise and worship you didn't even know why you felt like falling you just thought that, ah, the song was so nice. Something had landed on your head. Are we together now? This is speed. Hold me now, my dear. 
Watch this. This is what is happening in Koinonia. You are sitting down, but you just know that there is a weight. That glory, something is coming on you. You can't tell. You are not even falling. You are not shouting. You will look at someone shouting and feel bad and feel like, I, I wish I'm the person falling. Whereas the Holy Ghost is doing very serious things. And then access to the hearts of men. This is your package for miracle service. Now, you receive this. Watch this. We now share the grace. Watch this. Watch this. Remember, you traveled from another nation. The UK, US, Kenya, wherever. And then you just came. And at the end of the service, Satan can even fool you. You are from Kenya. Ah, oh, I see. Please sit down, madam. I see how it's a Kenyan. Uh, God bless you. Now, watch this. You can receive this. And while you receive it, they will share the grace. And you will still feel like nothing came on you. But you see, the exam is not marked in church. Go out. Listen, please, Koinonia, understand what I teach you. And God is able. You came for a meeting and you carried this. In two days, someone who forgot you. No, listen. He does not just remember. I've taught you this last week. A book is open in the realm of the spirit by reason of the grace that you carry. Watch this. In one week, a strange grace for illumination. You think, hold on, you think it's the spirit of revelation. It's not revelation, it's speed. It's just that speed demands revelation. There are graces when you carry, they call others too, so that they will work well in your life. And God is able. God is able. God is able. There are people because of the graces you carry, you will sustain the grace to fast for three days, for one week. Remember, that was a condition God gave you to allow your spirit, allow him do certain things. But the fortitude to fast that long was not there. So the grace comes. And while you wait upon the Lord, 10 years immediately is released within one month. Listen, if all you see is just physical healings, and deliverances you are not seeing well the major part of what caused listen one of the major reasons why God sends people from other nations and other places to this place is number one to be able to stand by the grace he has provided for to solve their problems but more than that to expose you to ancient mantles these are graces that were there by covenant Listen, there is nothing I carry that is as old as me. Everything I carry is older than me by far. We are only stewards. The grace predates us. It's a relay we are running. Others ran it and God added on it and gave us to hold it for a generation. To know the certainty of the things whereof you have been instructed. Please hear me. If you believe what I share with you tonight, you will marvel and you will wonder. You can choose tonight to agree with God that every challenge, except it does not have a name, that in this place, this night, God will bring it down. We are going to have like 10 minutes of serious prayer. Now listen please. During that time of prayer, forget about who is by your left and right. Forget about me. Just stay with God and pray passionately for the next 10 minutes. Lord, I came for an encounter. I came to receive healing. I came to receive deliverance. But I came to also attach myself to covenants. I came by the Spirit to receive graces outside, inside, online. Lift your voice and pray. be restoration please bring them out quickly 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 let's save time please
Restoration now. I speak it by the Spirit. The power of God is still coming on people. Recover. Recover. By the Spirit. Recover. I stretch my hands. Recover. By the power of prophecy. Recover. Recover years lost. Recover opportunities. E Paris Kebarashanda la Katariata. Recover in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and declare God is bringing recovery. Let me tell you, you will marvel and wonder that the things you thought has left you, you are about to find it waiting for you in your tomorrow. I speak to you, may that grace come upon you now again. Recovery, recovery, recovery. Restoration. I want to take authority over the spirit of delay. I'm seeing many people, your feet is chained in the spirit. You want to make progress, but you cannot make progress. Fire is falling from heaven now. I decree and declare, inside, outside, all the overflows, anyone under the sound of my voice, who is under the influence of the spirit of delay, at the count of three, may fire from heaven fall upon those chains. One, two, three. I break those chains now. Be free now from delay. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. I will hasten my word to perform it. I will not just perform it. I will give speed to my word. The word is quick and powerful. I declare again, any family here, any individual under the yoke of delay, I speak to you by the spirit. That yoke is broken now. That yoke is broken now. broken by the spirit hallelujah now I want to pray please listen I have prayed this prayer and for those of you who have missed it in time past may God grant you the grace to receive it now listen truly speaking there is a grace for speed please hear me a man's lifetime cannot allow the fullness of the purposes of God to be birthed. Some of you gave your life to Christ late already in life. It's not enough to rebuke delay. You must obtain the grace for speed. And watch this. I'm about to pray for people now. And that anointing is coming on people. As usual, you will find people running by the spirit. But I need to release that anointing. Father, I stand under heaven in this miracle service. There are people who have traveled from several nations and several territories at the count of three for you and for your family. That dimension of speed where 10 years can be put in one year. I declare right now, let it come upon you. One, two, three. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Speed. Parush Kabarakata. Speed. Career speed. I give speed to your life, speed to ministry. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Speed. Hello, Madonna. Hallelujah. Mommy. Please look at me, ma. Don't be embarrassed. I don't know you, but I'm seeing strong witchcraft over your family. Where are you coming from, madam? Madam, I'm looking at you. I'm seeing River State. Where are you from? States. Huh? States. River State. Yes, sir. The Lord says I should tell you that from this night, things will change in your life. She's your mother. Help that woman, please. I'm looking at the Lord in the spirit. I'm putting my hand inside a river. And I'm bringing something out. And the Lord says it's the destiny of this family. In the name of Jesus. That's the daughter. I command by the spirit. 
every planting that is not of the Lord I overturn and I uproot now in the name of Jesus Christ who is Naomi I'm hearing a name Naomi we have to hurry up I want to pray for the sick Naomi Hello, Kim Madonna. Ah, hello. The Naomi I'm talking about is outside. Where are you coming from? Come, stand. Your name is not Naomi. Is your name Naomi? What's your name? Come, stand. Where are you coming from, my dear? From where? I want to pray for you. Your name is Naomi. Come and stand. We have to hurry up. Hold on. I cancel CS. I, Madam, look at me. I stretch my hands now. I cancel CS. By the spirit of the living God. And I decree and declare like the Hebrew women you will give birth. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm saying it again. I correct what I'm seeing. In the name of Jesus. This is what doctors say. Baby is breached. In the name of Jesus. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I correct it now. May you give birth normally like the Hebrew women. In Jesus name. Let me pray. Are you married? You are backing a baby. Where is the baby? I'm looking at you in a vision. That's why I'm saying, oh, how can this? You know, I'm saying you came to Koinonia. You are backing a baby outside. This is the vision. I'm... You are not getting what I'm saying. Is this? You were backing this baby when I mentioned your case. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Were you backing a baby? Yes, sir. That's why I'm saying, are you married? Because you look too small to be a married woman. This is the real person I want to pray for. Bring this little baby. God is, I don't know whose child is this. Your child. But God, this lady you see is going to be a mighty vessel in the hand of God. She looks like a little girl. In the name of Jesus. What's her name? Nicole. Nicole. She may not know what we are doing, but we stand in the presence of the people of God. We anoint this lady. May she become a Deborah to her generation. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My dear, let me pray for you. Where are you from? Kogi State. I want to pray for you. Huh. Immediately she mentioned Kogi State. I saw what I used to see now. Now I'm seeing the map of Nigeria. And I'm seeing the power of God going to Kogi State. Kogi State. I'm praying now. It's a sign and wonder. Every time I see that, if you are from that locality, the power of God comes on you immediately. In the name of Jesus, I command witchcraft associated with that territory. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Even the lawful captive shall be delivered. Hallelujah. Who is Magdalene? Magdalene, my dear, come. In the name of Jesus Christ, I anoint you. There is grace. You look young, but you are going to be a mother to men. This is what I'm seeing. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord anoint you and make it so. My dear, I rebuke the hand of witchcraft now. Release her. I'm seeing chains on you. I declare by the Spirit, release this lady now. I'm about to minister deliverance shortly. Release her now. In the name of Jesus. Please bring someone in overflow too now. A lady. The power of God is coming upon that lady. Now, as I speak, overflow too. Mighty fire of God is coming. Please bring her quickly. We have to save time. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. Come, my dear.
the grace that you want to make married men disturb you look at me I come against that spirit now not only you there are five other people I'm seeing I don't know where they are but in Jesus name there is a like like it like an almost like an evil anointing that makes only married people to look for you in the name of Jesus by the God of heaven I lift that negative thing of your life now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus I hear the name Magdalene I don't know if Magdalene I want to pray very quickly we have to pray for the sick you are the covenant keeping In the name of Jesus, I lift you out of this tragedy by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I speak to this lady. I'm seeing this lady, but all I'm seeing is snakes completely. I declare be free now by the Spirit of the living God. The Bible says, now the Lord is that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Be free right now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Let me pray for you, my dear grace for you. The favor that is on your life, I command it to start speaking. It will not only be a name that is on you. It will speak right now in Jesus' name. Your sister, your name is Magdalene. Come. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord bless you. Look at me. The Lord is taking away shame and reproach from your life. These two things. Shame and reproach. Shame and reproach. Shame and reproach. Please stand up. I speak to you by the God of heaven. The month of November, a big miracle is coming to your life. A big miracle. I lay my hands upon you and I declare in the name of Jesus, be free right now. Why is this girl here? This Magdalene? Come, my dear. I pray for you. Place your hand on your head. I declare, oh God, let this chain be taken now. I'm seeing a chain on this girl's head. Be removed now. Be removed this, like the devil wanting to just bring this lady under captivity. I remove it right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody lay your hands on her. So anybody just touch her. Release her now by the spirit of God. There's no place for you. Take everything that belongs to her. Restore it and go. Now. Now, please listen. I want to minister deliverance. Please believe it. You may not know. The woman from Kenya. Come. It's time for God to change your life. Please stand up. When did you come here? Uh, yesterday. Yesterday, yes. you came here. God is about to turn your life around. Amen. Glory. You are still coming, and you are coming with four people the next time you are coming. Amen. Thank you. Jesus. Madam, what do you do? Madam, what do you do? I'm a commissioner for human rights. Commissioner for human rights yes. in Nairobi. Yes. In, in two weeks, I'm going to be in your nation. I would like to see you Amen. in your nation. There is a reason why I'm talking. I'm not seeing you alone. I'm seeing four other people yes. that the Lord wants me to pray for. Yes. But I want to pray for you, madam. Because I don't know if you believe it or not. You have a political destiny. Amen. As you are like this, looking at me. You have a political destiny in Kenya. And God, by his spirit, is going to make this happen. But another thing is there is also the call of God upon your life. You are a woman that loves God. 
there is is starting like an intercessory grace and a prophetic grace but you get to a point where among the graces God will give you is the grace to pray for barren women notice this grace God is going to bring this grace upon you God I'm also seeing you build a charity foundation there is going to be a mighty humanitarian foundation that I see you build I'm seeing food stuff and I'm seeing different things first it will have to do with young girls people who have been abused and so on but I see it not only that I see women too women God is going to increase your influence I lay my hands upon you and I declare by the Spirit carry this grace go to Kenya with it go and excel I command the two lift gates of Nairobi and the entire Kenya to be open for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ go with this anointing go and prosper may the Lord multiply your political career and may the Lord prepare you for the mighty ministerial assignment he has for you in the name of Jesus Christ I pray hallelujah praise the Lord an angel of the Lord is standing here someone will shout here under a strong anointing I just saw that grace I don't know first I think until the shout happens I know why God just from here right to the back there is an anointing I just saw a, a very mighty manifestation of the power of God here now listen whether you know it or not if there is anything influencing your, your destiny that is not of the Christ he's about to give way right now <laughs> hallelujah at the count of three hear me whether you are inside outside or following online I want you to shout that name Jesus with understanding it's not just a chant my Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower not a weak tower the righteous run it to it and they are saved I want to pray for you I know you shouted in other months but great deliverance great deliverance is about to come your way father I pray that every spirit in this place that does not name the name of the Christ that is sitting on the destinies of men and women manipulating their results I stand and call upon the God of Jeshurun the one that rides upon the wings and I declare let there be deliverance at the count of three shout that name Jesus one two three be free now be free now be free now please bring them out be free now overflow one overflow two overflow three all the extension online I declare be free now from ancestry be free from foundation be free from witchcraft. Bring them out. Haru Salikata. Embrekete Barata. Operations of darkness. I'm seeing a womb. Like the drawing of a woman's womb. And I'm seeing it close. It doesn't just mean physical barrenness. It means a spirit that is closing the door of results many people cannot get results but right now that door is about to open and I stand by the God of heaven by the fire of the Holy Ghost everyone's destiny that has been closed so that it will not find manifestation at the count of three let it be open one two three be open now be open now be open now be open now
seeing the Lord is placing, listen please the Lord is placing a very strange grace for finances, listen to me, please I want you to believe it there is a grace for finances and it's coming on many people I'm not asking you what you are doing, I'm not asking you what you know, I'm telling you what God is doing I stand by the God of heaven and I declare, Father, the men and women that must enter into this dimension, as you are showing me at the count of three, may that grace rest upon you. One, two, three. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. A strength grace for abundance. Receive supply. Let things walk in a way that will surprise you. I command things to walk in a way that will marvel you. Mighty God. A few minutes, we are going to pray for the sick now. Now, please listen. I'm only going to do this for this overflow and overflow one. That's not to mean I'm neglecting the remaining. It's just a revelation that God is giving me. There are two angels standing by my left and my right. And every time I see this, God wants me to move. Listen, hear me. Except God is not God. When I pass any road where you are, anything that does not name the name of the Christ, and any dimension that is not of God in your life, it must give way. Now, I only do this for this and overflow one. Afterwards, we are going to pray for the sick. Please, I want you to just believe. I don't know why God does these things but I want you to believe that he is mighty and that he will glorify himself Father in the name of Jesus Christ glorify yourself change everything that needs to be changed many of you will be receiving impartations that will shift you to dimensions 
I want you to believe it. I will pray not everywhere, but there are a few people. I'm seeing this happen by the Spirit. Pali Shalatos, Pragados, Krekete Varatushka. I shift you in the Spirit. Every limitation that does not name the name of Christ. I'm praying mantles, anointings by the Spirit coming on people right now. Let that presence of God shift you to dimensions in the name of Jesus. Dimensions. I'm seeing a chain around here. I break that chain now. I'm seeing a chain around here. Let that chain be broken now. Let that chain be broken now. Let that chain be broken now. Break now. Break now. Break now. Chains be broken now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, God is turning your life around. Where are you coming from? Kaduna State. In the name of Jesus. Break now. In the name of Jesus. Be free now from everything that is not of God. Be free now. Something is breaking here. Something is breaking here. Something is breaking here. Parush Alikatosh. I break it now. I break it now. I break it now. I break it now. I break it now by the Spirit of the Living God. I break it now. Mama, I break it now. I break it now. an evil spirit just around here. I come against you now. I take authority over that influence. You must go now. Go now. Go now. Go now. Go now. Overflow one, lift your voice and pray in the spirit. Harusa Zigadesh. Now listen. Keeper, you don't have to touch me. Please be your brother's keeper so you don't enjoy yourself. But as I pass here, anything that is not of God is about to give way right now. Thank you, Jesus. Go now, let it go now, let it go now, let it go now. All times I come against you now. In And I'm seeing who is Rebecca. Rebecca, they call you Becky. Rebecca, just not inside. Here you are. What's your name? Rebecca. Don't worry, it's okay. What's your name? Don't just come out if, in the name of Jesus Christ, come. I end oppression now over your life and your family. Oh, you, my dear, your name is Rebecca. Where are you from? You are from are you from Makodi, Benway State? In the name of Jesus, I keep seeing this spirit every time I pray for people. That thing they call Aleku A L something K U. In the name of Jesus, I cast that spirit by the God of Heaven. If there is anyone under the sound of my voice who is a victim of that spirit, you are from that region. I stand by the God of Heaven. Let it come to an end now. Help them, please. Let it come to an end now. 
in the name of Jesus hold on please right here there is a gentleman who will be mightily used by God I just saw a strong mantle from my head resting on someone I stretch my hands Lord I don't know where they are let that grace come on you now strange mantle prayer fire word fire illumination in the spirit receive that grace now receive that grace now receive that grace now I'm standing here and I'm seeing a family with a yoke of marital delay I'm seeing something that looks like an arrow just coming from heaven right now let deliverance come now let it come now I'm still moving the hand of God is coming on people right now thank you Jesus thank you Jesus please you don't have to touch me in the name of Jesus right here financial stagnation comes to an end an anointing is coming on someone for your family financial stagnation let it be over now my dear be free now out now someone here the power of God is coming on that person be free now free from everything that is not of God New dimensions, new dimensions. I'm seeing an anointing here. New dimension. The old story must leave you. That's what God is saying. I'm prophesying to someone here. The old story must leave you. The old is gone so that the new will come. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where is the woman? Wait, hold on please. I held someone's hand now. Holding a photo of a sick patient. Where is she? Come. Who is this? Where is he? He's in China. What's wrong with him? He's depressed now. If I don't pray for him, I'm seeing him inside a coffin. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, let there be deliverance for him now. What's his name? Ibrahim. This is not only something affecting him, this is something that is influencing the entire family. But I stand by the God of heaven and I set you free. In the name of Jesus, be completely free and I speak to him, Ibrahim, may the power of God touch you and perfect you now and perfect you forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for the sick. My friend, this man looking at me, come. Where are you coming from? Huh? You are from Kogi State. What do you do? Are you a man of God? You came here trusting God for fresh fire. Come. You are about to receive it because I'm seeing you from Kogi State. You, where is your church? Look at me, sir. Where You have a church? You are under a church. Hmm. A time will come, God will give you your own work. Now God is preparing you. Be faithful. You will go, but now is not the time. You leave now, you will suffer for nothing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't let sincere people come and push you out of the will of God. But surely a time is coming, and you will walk in very strange dimensions of the anointing. Father, I lay my hands upon this man. Let his dealings with the spirit progress in the name of Jesus. Not only an impartation, a dealing that produces real power in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, may that grace rest upon you by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. This lady with green, this lady, you, come. The Lord is about to turn your life around in a way that will surprise you. Two things will happen to you. Number one, I'm seeing restoration. God is saying, I should tell you, he's bringing restoration. Number two, I'm seeing the gift of men. Please do listen to my message. Help them on the gift of men. God is bringing people strangely to lift you. I lay my hands upon you and I pray, may this grace be effectual. Carry that grace right now. And you will start having visions. Visions. God is going to start giving you dreams and he will start giving you visions. 
in the name of Jesus. This is very strange what I'm seeing. Except that I saw it, I will not say it. Stop running away from the call. You are a man of God's wife. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm saying what does not make sense. Stop running from the call. You are the wife of a man of God, a minister of the gospel. The Lord will bring performance to his word. This thing I tell you is a strange mystery, the way God works. But in the name of Jesus, I place the word of God upon that prophecy. It's time for you to not fight the will of God. It's time for you to relinquish your own will in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are going to pray just one prayer point. The Lord is asking me, immediately we do that, we'll pray for the sick and we'll start submitting our request. Where is that young lady that came out with one mama while I was praying for her? There's a young lady that was wearing glasses. I don't, if, if you are here, you are the one. What do you do? You are going to be very wealthy. Come. Are you a lawyer? Huh? Is this your mother? Where are you coming from, mother? Okay, you are the reverse woman. This lady you see is going to be extremely wealthy. Because I'm seeing you a lawyer. And you are going to, you, I don't know what area of law you are going to specialize. But I'm seeing you sitting with so many business people. This is a lot of business people. Signing contracts, helping people to process a lot of things. Millions, huh? That's what? That's where she is right now. Doing some things abroad. She's what? That's what she's doing right now, where she works. That's what she's doing now. Right now, where she works. Because I'm seeing God will just cause them to like her. It's not every man that is a foolish and a stupid man. There are people who are out to genuinely bless. Yes, sir. And I pray for your daughter and I connect her by the Spirit. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. she will find these people. Amen. And in the name of Jesus, she will shift her to another dimension. Amen. Mama, God is saying I should tell you, forgive. Does it make sense to you? Yes, my husband also is a lawyer. But your husband is a lawyer? Yes, but... What was the issue? Nothing is happening. Don't worry, ma. Do you know why you fell under the anointing? You fell on behalf of all the troubles in your... It wasn't just your personal falling alone. There are times that you fall representing all of these troubles. Because this is not what I'm even saying. God is saying I should tell you to forgive. Forgiveness. Now, it doesn't make sense. And God has not given me an interpretation. But let me tell you this. You see, look up. The average person seated here has been hurt by someone. Whether friends, are we together? Uncles, relatives, people you trusted and they betrayed you. Let me tell you something about unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is a terrible spirit. It's one of the master secrets to delay. Unforgiveness. It will keep you in one place forever. You are there angry and annoyed and most of what you'll be angry about is legitimate. However, you see, forgiveness is a type of giving. Understand this. Forgiveness is still the, the giving grace that helps men to forgive. The only thing with forgiveness is that you give in advance. Are we together? The highest form of forgiveness is tolerance. Where you know it will happen again. And you build a system around it to not hurt you. We live in a society that is so hot conscious. This one hurt me. This one did this. There are too many things that can create offense. The Bible says in nothing should you be offended. It's a choice. Mama, in the name of Jesus, please don't cry. I don't know what it is and why you are crying. But my dear, comfort your mother after the prayer. Eh? In the name of Jesus, what is before you is greater than anything that has caused you pain. And in the name of Jesus, forgive. In the name of Jesus, forgive. I also pray for someone here. Do you know there are many couples that have not been able to forgive one another in marriages? It can last for 10 years, 20 years, same room, same bed, but that bitterness, especially for the men. We don't know that this might be the secret. The Bible says for dishonoring your wife, the consequence is that your heavens will be closed. It's not a lie. 
That's why you see men struggle and struggle and simple things become hard because of the propensity for bitterness. Make up your mind in this miracle service that you will let go and not only forgive but tolerate. I wish I can tell you there are some things your loved ones are doing that they will never do again. But they will do it. Every time a door is about to open here, offense comes. It's a choice. I will not be offended. Are we together? Father, we pray for our daddy in the name of Jesus. The kind of miracle that God will do in the life of this man. Let it be so powerful that everybody around will know that this is the doing of the Lord. I decree it and I establish it in the name of Jesus Christ. There is a gentleman here. We are going to pray goodness. You see how time just runs. There is a gentleman here. You are a member of Mountain of Fire. Where are you? Mountain of Fire. You are a serious brother. Mountain of Fire. Now, please, I'm, I'm not just saying you attend. Don't listen to instructions, please. Right? MFM, my friend. You are serious. You come from where? MFM, Kano. MFM Kano, how about you? MFM Calabar, how about you? Lagos. Lagos, I want to pray. I'm not saying if you are from MFM, just come out like that. There are particular people. It doesn't matter what denomination you are from. Once you are here, huh? this is a universal, this is a master key. It will complement on what every grace and every man and woman of God is doing. But I want to pray for you. My friend, I, I'm, going, I'm first going to pray for you. Where are you from? I'm from a Bible state. There is serious witchcraft sitting on your destiny. Yes, I hope sir. you are not embarrassed. Yes, sir. Yes, huh? sir. You need help. You are prayed. Stand up, please. You are a prayer warrior. You yes, can pray. You can do fasting. Yes, huh? yes, Sometimes you just need a grace to help you. You hear what I tell you? I'm going to pray for you. If I don't pray for you, I'm seeing the spirit of death. Start sweeping people in your family like that, like play, like play until he starts killing people. But let me tell you, don't despise yourself. You need a lot of mentorship, but you are going to be a mighty vessel in the hand of God. This brother you see is very serious with God. Huh? Very serious with God. You just need the right support, impartations, and a mentorship system that makes for balance in your life. Hold my hand. Father, what's your name? Huh? Anthony. Tony. In the name of Jesus, everything that represents witchcraft, I join my faith with that of your father and your leader, Dr. Daniel Odikoya, and I decree in the name of Jesus, be free now. I decree by the power of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of death far from your dwelling. In the name of Jesus Christ, I want to pray for you. Who is looking for a job? Uh -uh. I'm not saying I'm not on employment. I'm talking to these guys. That I, of course, I know that people are trusting God for jobs. Where did you apply? Huh? Cardinal Stacy service. The Lord says I should pray for you that they will give you. Do I know you applied for a job? Stand up. Prophecy is powerful. In a moment, God can just change things like that. My dear, let me tell you this. It's not even the issue of Kaduna State Civil Service alone. Huh? God is going to give you unusual influence. It will marvel you. Are we together now? Hold my hands. You believe what I'm telling you? Yes. Father, confirm your word in a way that will surprise this lady. Let that rejected stone in the name of Jesus become the chief cornerstone receive of that grace in the name of Jesus I speak it so I make it so I establish it by the power of prophecy let me pray for you gentlemen I don't know if it's you or someone related to you but there's someone God is giving a job someone looking for a job but I want to pray for you father you called out the gentlemen from MFM Kano and the remaining places I decree and declare by the God of heaven that everything that represents witchcraft in your life let it give way now in the name of Jesus 
let it give way now even by the power of the Holy Spirit the Lord is showing me a lady I'm not going to ask you to come God bless you but I'm lifting up my hand I'm seeing you know how you cover a bride when you are about to marry before they remove that thing from her face this is what I'm seeing but that one is not bride of wedding this is evil covering your entire a human being with almost no head huh? and the Lord is saying I should pray that that veil be torn I don't know who that person is but right now the power of God is going there, there, there are many of you I perceive in the name of Jesus that veil that has covered you so that no good thing finds you by the God of heaven and in the name of Jesus the Christ of God I declare that veil torn into pieces now Turn into pieces now. Inside, outside, online. Turn into pieces now. The last case I attend to and then we we'll begin to pray for the sick. Nothing ever lasts in your hand. This is the problem you are trusting God for. In fact, it's one of your requests. Nothing. Many good things continue to happen, but they never last. If a, if a season of open door comes, three four months sometimes men can come into your life or women can come into your life and after two three months for reasons you cannot explain you have never sustained any blessing for up to two years as it comes you will see it sometimes you will go to bed in the night and you will have a dream you may see someone come maybe to molest you or to attempt to have an affair with you this is what i'm seeing the moment that thing happens it will not be up to one month and every good thing goes down but i'm praying right now in the name of jesus whoever belongs to this category every attachment you have with spirits that are not of the christ that warrant visitations in the night to molest and oppress you and spy into your liberty i declare by the spirit of god be free now be free now help them please be free now be free now my dear come you come hold my hands it's your it's a new season for you by the anointing of the holy ghost step into a new season i've touched you I saw you climbing a ladder in the spirit. I release you into that dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. We have to hurry up and pray for the sick now. Now please watch this. This lady jumping. Shame and reproach. I call it by his name. And I command it to leave you now. shame and reproach to leave you and let you go in the name of Jesus someone will run by the anointing to me don't stop the person just hold the person this is what I'm seeing by the spirit this is a ministry of signs and wonders why these things I'm not saying to run consciously I'll send you back this is by the anointing please there is order in the house of God order in the church are we together the, the hand of God now as I speak is coming upon you. My soul longs and even thirsts for you. My heart and my flesh cries out for the living God. For the living God. Incline your ears with trembling and tears of yearning. To the throne of grace to seek your face and burning longing for you. I need you, I need you, I need you, I need you. Help me. I need you. nothing, no place, no one else to do. I need you, I need you, I need you. You satisfy. I declare to all of you that came out by the Spirit, I shift you, go forward now. 
go forward now the power that holds you down i take authority over it in the name of jesus go forward now i release your families to go forward now in the name of jesus now please hear me our time is gone we have to be fast now listen for those who will be laying hands on you don't think that because it is not joshua selman laying hands on you remember i told you that there is a grace that everyone who is called to serve in this ministry and designated and mandated carries that grace we're about to pray for the sick now now listen please there are three conditions that i will want to minister lay hands on the people myself remember don't tell lies you cannot come to the truth lying are we together don't insist that i just want joshua selman to touch that's not the idea aside from those who are in the main auditorium that i request to come out if you're trusting god for a miracle if you are here and you are suffering from cancer number one number two you are suffering from hiv number three you are suffering from barrenness it doesn't matter what overflow you are in if you have any of these three cases please with those who are in the main auditorium i want you to join them and come otherwise please all the overflows move to your projector screen and stand there all as directed by the ushers or protocol anyone trusting god for to be prayed for for healing right now i want you to make your way to the front quickly and then in addition to that the three cases i've mentioned you come into the main auditorium and join please quickly we have to hurry up overflow one please walk to your projector stand overflow two i don't know from where now as directed walk to your projector stand overflow three walk to your projector stand um my god i don't know if there's overflow two b then just walk as you are directed somebody should stand in front of them and direct them appropriately please overflow four um also just move to your projector stand or as directed those online following from whatever nation of the world just connect by faith as we pray hallelujah now please watch this our time is gone and we're going to be doing this very fast listen please if you are here and you're yet to write your prayer request but venture you are coming for the first time and you need an opportunity to write your prayer request please someone help them with a piece of paper or whatever it is that you will need everyone you can pen down your prayer request now when you're done please lift it and there will be ushers PR help them protocol help them whoever needs to help them let's make it very fast overflow one two three those online I believe that theirs has also been collated we're going to have everything now so that as soon as we are done we'll pray for the request the moment you are done please wave it or pass it to the person um, at the aisle where it can be picked give them room to write if you need a piece of paper you can help your friend or wave your hand
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank God we have some hands tonight. Um, Pastor Jakes and Ejimi will do Overflow 3. Since there will be several people there, Overflow 3. They'll be ministering to Overflow 3. Benga will go to Overflow 1. Promise Overflow 1, 2. Um, Kenny Overflow 2. 2A now. Uh, 2A or 2B. Praise the Lord. Isaac Overflow 2B. Praise the Lord. Ima Overflow Overflow what now? What is left? Huh? Overflow, the last overflow. Where overflow four? Okay, no overflow to be go to overflow four. Praise the Lord. It'll have to be a very quick walk because there are several people. I'll minister to the people here. Praise the Lord. Now please listen. Please. Except they want to talk to you prophetically, don't worry. Listen, just a touch is all that you need. And I want you to believe by faith. As soon as they touch you, do what you couldn't do. Head back to your seat. Unfortunately, because of the limited time, we may not have time to take testimonies. As you would have seen in many of my external ministrations. For two reasons. One, this is a miracle service dedicated to ministering to people. If we we'll pray and say, if you are healed, come out. It will take a lot of time. We don't have that luxury of time. Praise the Lord. So we are doing three things at the same time. One, we are praying for the sick. Has promised. As promised. Okay. Pastor Alpha. Oh. Uh, who is in overflow one? Only you. Two of you. Okay, Pastor Alpha, join them in overflow three. Pastor Femi. Uh huh. He, Pastor Femi should go to. Did I give you a place? Pastor Femi, join um, overflow two. Two B. Okay, with, with Ima now. 2B or 4. You are in 2. Only you. Okay, so, um, Femi, please join him in Overflow 4. Overflow 4. Praise the Lord. Just direct them. Father, in the name of Jesus, we stand by this corporate grace. And we declare, let there be miracles right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Please write your requests, believing. The worship team will lead us through a time of worship while we are doing this. It will be very fast. Afterwards, I will just pray and prophesy to everyone and then we'll try to tie it up tonight. But whilst you are sitting, make sure you connect by faith. You can involve your loved ones. Let them know that God is moving right now. He's blessing people. Lord, we give you all the praise. Let there be great miracles by the Spirit of God. In Jesus' name I pray. Praise the Lord. Thank you for your patience. Please rise up on your feet. If they are still praying for you, where, wherever, whatever, overflow, don't worry. Just, just hang on there. Please stretch your hands to this request as we pray. I'd like you to open your mouth and begin to declare by the Spirit. Unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Please lift your voice, everyone. Let's have all the requests here, please. If there are people who are yet to submit... Shabarus kabarata shiketia, embrato zezi alakata. I'd like you to stretch your hands to this request as you declare that these Egyptians that I see today, I see no more forever. Shabrato skaparu zedegetia, rakata baranda skete balakoto shiata, embrato skaparu shalakatos, rekete baruda shiata. Lord, turn impossible situations around in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, release miracles, release solutions, break yokes, oh God. Turn around family situations for your name's sake. Reveal callings, reveal destinies. Let your people find purpose. Let your people find direction. Make sure you are praying. Lord, stay the power of darkness over the requests of your people. Shabarato Sedepa. Entele Koto Shabra. Shib 
In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please agree with me in the name of Jesus. Amen. Louder amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, tonight we come to you. The God that can answer prayers. And Lord, I decree, standing in the presence of your people, thousands of people have submitted their requests, a representation of their expectations, their pain, their disappointments, their anticipations. Lord, I decree and declare that every spirit that is back of these problems, we declare lose your grip now. Lose your grip now. Number two, I declare that every grace that needs to be released towards you for these requests to be granted by the message of the God of heaven, we decree and declare by faith we channel these graces to you. Every human agent whose mind needs to be touched by God to allow these requests to be answered, in the name of Jesus, we call on the Father of Spirits to touch them on that wise. And every request that remains because of the hardness of the hearts of men, we break that hardness now. Father, answer speedily. Lord, answer speedily. Turn situations around. Every death sentence represented in this request, we declare that death sentence is cancelled. In the name of Jesus. And so, Father, we give you praise because we declare by faith, the very faith of the Son of God, that these requests are met in Jesus' name. As I stand upon these requests, I declare by the spirit of faith that in the mighty name of Jesus, that which God has done now remains permanent in Jesus name and I prophesy over you by the God of heaven the Egyptians that you see today that pursued you from Egypt to the Red Sea and beyond I declare by the spirit you will see them no more forever no matter how long you have been in Egypt if you go out of Egypt, no going back. In the name of Jesus. Between now and the next three weeks, may the God of heaven, in the name of Jesus, 21 days was the maximum time of contention in the realm of the spirit. I decree and declare, it will not exceed three weeks. And every request that has been released already but has been hijacked by men and systems I mount pressure on those men and systems to allow this request manifest I mount pressure on those systems allow this request manifest let it be so in the name of Jesus give Jesus praise hallelujah I'm going to declare the last prophetic word over everyone here. Please, I'd like you to be sensitive. Don't be careless about it. Hallelujah. Please, they can come and pick it. I believe in the power of prophecy. The spoken word is also creative. It can make things happen. It not only reveals what will happen, it makes things that has no business happening to happen. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare over you, please hear me, by the God of heaven, every door that has been closed over your destiny, I stand here as the servant of the living God. I force that door to open now. Everyone trusting God for a job, a meaningful job, not a nonsense job that does not have honor. I pray now. 
a job that will not take your relationship away from God a job that will not make you compromise receive that job in the name of Jesus I pray for your spiritual life the kind of fire that you need on your prayer life in this season I speak over you receive fresh fire access to revelation access to light receive it in Jesus name every helper of your destiny who must show up in this season to make the word of God to come to pass I command them to appear now I preached last week on the book of remembrance let me pray that prayer in the name of Jesus I open the book both in the heavens and in the earth and I declare every good thing you have done to any man on earth I compel remembrance now I compel remembrance now every kind of barrenness biological barrenness financial barrenness career barrenness ministerial barrenness i cause it now and i command it to leave you let me pray over the spirit of death any family here appointed unto death i speak by the god of heaven be free now Number two, every family appointed unto hardship that you will never see the goodness and the salvation of the Lord. I cancel that pronouncement now. Listen, by the blood of the eternal covenant, in the name of Jesus, I cause every foundational issue that causes hardship and pain and retrogression over your life now the kind of honor you have never seen in your life I speak to you by the Spirit step into it let me pray for favor I will never stop praying this prayer till you carry it bodily access to the hearts of kings access to the resources of kings receive it now by favor restoration of visions dreams listen there are many of you who used to have dreams and encounters nothing crosses over you without your eyes seeing it but it looks like you are becoming like Eli your eyes becoming dim. I pray for you. I fan back your vision to flames. In the name of Jesus, every pattern that is in any family, you see it in your siblings, you see it in your life. I declare, let it be broken now. Anyone in ministry here, please hear me. I speak to you. As you return back to your various stations, let fire fall upon your altar. I pray for everyone in business. Dying business, dead business, let it come back to life now. Please. Don't just say amen, believe. Creation is happening. Everything God showed you from the beginning of this year and told you should have entered your hand by now. But the devil is adding 30 extra years to your 400 years. I push you by prophecy in the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me, I speak to you by the God of heaven. Any man that fights you goes down instantly. Yeah. 
and anyone holding what is yours and has vowed not to release it in the name of Jesus may God humble the pride of wicked men anyone who has said over my dead body for this family to move may God answer their prayers I open the door of favor towards every family here in the name of Jesus all our ladies and all the women that are due to give birth I declare give birth like the Hebrew women in the name of Jesus let me pray for all the gentlemen our time is gone but I must pray for you the grace that establishes a man early may that grace rest on you for those of you who are still 30 years 35 40 50 still loitering your parents house eating your mother's food not just as honor but as a necessity in the name of Jesus by the God who is the lifter of men I declare may that reproach live your life now anyone here called barren in Jesus name by November miracle service you come here pregnant already let me pray for every ministry here every prayer group every platform intercessory groups churches fresh grace for you in the name of Jesus Christ the final prayer I'm going to pray for you honor is what makes men reward you listen 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 honor is the ability to discern the ability to celebrate and the ability to reward men for their uniqueness you can be as anointed as anything but when honor is not on you men will only just celebrate you from afar but you will never live a rewarded life i pray the prayer that jabez cried unto god for the bible says and jabez was more honorable than his brethren i pray for you everywhere you find yourself rise above your contemporaries let me pray the last prayer point don't say it's not important there are people here your life is not advancing the kingdom in any way this is not altar call this prayer for you to settle down and let your life advance as far as God is concerned you are time on earth if your life does not find a space to advance the kingdom not your work not your service not your worship it looks like nothing about your life there is no kingdom come represented in your life you are just living for yourself hand to mouth to marry have children maybe go to school get a job I redirect your focus now in the name of Jesus Christ may your life and everything involved around it cause the kingdom the power and the glory of God to be manifest in the name of Jesus and every other request here whether mentioned or not I stand in agreement with you in the name of Jesus Christ the Son of the Living God receive it as a testimony in the next one minute whether you are in overflow one two three or here you are yet to make Jesus Lord of your life genuinely please no movement and or you are saying apostle I've handed my life over to Jesus but for some reason things are just scattered around my life and I don't seem to gain any footing and bearing and I want to make my way right with God please whether you are in overflow one overflow two, the main auditorium aside from overflow three please I'd like you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand here right now koinonia celebrate them don't wait for anyone to come first quickly if you're coming please come and stand 
Come and stand. Apostle, I'm not sure if I'm saved or not. Join them quickly. Join them quickly. Koinonia, is this the best you can do? Join them quickly. Scripture says you must be born again. If you're coming from outside, please make it snappy. Make it as fast as possible. Hallelujah. I salute every one of you here. Please lift your right hand. Believe that Jesus is here standing before you. Gentlemen and ladies, please join them very quickly. If you're coming, please come quickly. Quickly, quickly. You're coming, come very quickly. Thank you. Now, say this after me. Say it passionately. Say it truthfully, believing that Jesus is here and he will honor your confession of faith. Say after me, Lord Jesus, tonight I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Tonight, I ask you to be my Lord, my Savior, and my King. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that from tonight and forever, I move forward ever, backward never. These three ladies didn't pray the prayer. Somebody direct them and let them pray that prayer. The prayer is already finished. You, this yellow girl, and those two, those my sisters. Or shall any of you, are you not Christians? Direct them. Someone pray the prayer with them. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare right now begin to walk in victory in Jesus name I introduce you to the ministry of the Holy Spirit you will know him you will walk in his ways you will command strange results in your life in the name of Jesus Christ I call you tonight the righteousness of God I call you that you are part of the family of heaven in the name of Jesus all of the people who are just coming you're welcome God bless you just join that group that they are praying with and just pray the prayer that they lead you to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, thank you for these precious ones that you died for. I decree and declare that tonight you receive by faith the abundance of grace, the gift of righteousness, and I declare that you reign in life. Go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. All of you in concert, I want you to follow the lady smiling at you with her hands lifted. Everyone, please follow her. And um, they will direct you to a few people to just follow you up. Praise the Lord. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.